occasion for the Nycliffe Footy Club. Blow me down if Southern Districts don't come out and uh, just upset the party <laughs> somewhat by actually beating them, which I don't think anyone else would have really expected except for the Southern Districts faithful. So what are you expecting today? Yeah, well, it's, uh, it's <laughs> they're a really difficult team to read at the moment, Southern Districts. They're, they're six on the ladder with five wins and six losses, but you would expect them to be quite high conceding, uh, considering the... The, uh, the really competitive nature that their team has got throughout the throughout the year. So, to uh, yeah, for, for them coming in, they'd be they'd be buoyed with the confidence that they got a couple of weeks ago, beating Nycliffe on their their home deck at Nycliffe Oval in a, a really historic game. You know, being under lights at Nycliffe Oval for the first time, and and for them to go out there and really dictate terms for, for pretty much the whole game and and really get the win there would have left a really sour taste in the, the Nycliffe team's mouth. Aaron, we've just seen Southern Districts run out, and I was looking at the team sheet earlier on. Benjamin R. Matt, number four, taking his place in the Southern Districts team. That What is it with these guys that retire and come back? That, that <laughs> cannot be Ben R. Matt, surely. Uh, no, no. I, I haven't seen Ben for a couple of years, actually. I'm, I'm thinking it might be his son. Oh, yeah, I spotted I number it four is, out yeah. there, and it, yeah. does, it does look a, a somewhat younger version yeah, of, yeah. of Ben R. Matt. Um. <laughs> the, 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 these, I mean... <laughs> Still trying to uh, see if I can locate just, him. Just out in the there. goal square. Oh, yeah, there just is in the goal square. Quite a little bit smaller than uh, than Ben, but yeah. um, if he's anything like his old man, he'd, he'd be uh, a very skillful. And I've heard that mover. he is a pretty good player yep. as well. I reckon that's why he's uh, he's got the jumper yeah. in the Premier League. Well, these are the moments when you know, when you definitely know that you're getting older. <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> because I mean, I watched uh, Ben Armat Senior, if I can put it that way, play so much good footy for the Darwin Footy Club and then for Southern Districts, and when I saw that name, I thought, no, don't tell me. And here he is, the youngster, just watching him have a kick. He's not happy with that one either in the little <laughs> try. I saw the little shake of the head there. I made the distance though, probably not up to his standard with the, with the spin and the ball drop, but that was yeah. uh, still an effective kick. No, that's right. So Southern District's going for their warm-ups here in the, the 50 metre arc at the airport end. The Tigers are out on the ground. As usual, Natasha, they have a very good lineup hey. on uh, on paper here this afternoon. And what are you expecting from them? I mean, just, just before I get into the, the team, the, the, the thing that I'm surprised about is four weeks ago, pretty much, they played each other. So you, you, that, that's, it's a very short... So they played each other twice in four weeks. Well, the same thing happened to St Mary's and Nycliffe in the first two rounds. Then they played round one, and then they... You, you, you sort know. of looked at the time table, you were, hey, hang on, round four, they were playing again. I, I just don't, you know, so they've got their games out of the way before Christmas. I yeah. just, it's just, a, it's bizarre. I, I don't understand how how that happens. So, yeah, they'll be pretty, uh, sides are a little bit different um, compared to that, that round, of course, where they not quite good off. But, you know, you always look at Nike if they've got so much depth, uh, so much talent, so much fitness as well, plus the skill to go with it. So they're the, they're the cream of the crop, that's why they're on top. And they've won the last couple of premierships. So, you know, it's going to be a hard task for districts. But like Aaron was saying, they're so unpredictable at times that you, you sort of can't write them off even looking at the team sheet because they can either come out and play or they come out and don't sort of play. So, but with uh, Nightcliff, just the, the, you know, Rolls Royce, when you've got Cam Eilert out there and he's still in prime condition, um, you know, and popping up with a number of goals each week, not just, you know, um, having his part and as uh, good players do when you get to the end of your career, you, you like to play up forward and, and, and sort of snag um, those goals um, from time to time. Just looking at the players as they're coming towards our commentary box here, Cameron Island doing his drill, so too Kyle Emery. Um, made no secret on a big rap for Kyle Emery. I know Natasha would be absolutely devastated that he's left the uh, Palmerston Magpies, but, gee, what an impact he's made at the Tigers. He's a real focal point, and Natasha, a really, really skillful, hard-working player, and he's getting so much value because of that hard work he puts in. He is, and when you looked at, you know, the last couple of seasons, he played in the midfield for the Magpies and was probably our best player, the, the and giant. now we can't get a crack in the midfield. He's actually up in the forward line. It just goes to show the talent that Nightcliffe have. Yeah. You know, any other other, other club that Kyle Emery would have gone to, he would be chopping out through the midfield. But you know, he's up, he's up there and um, he's creating a target for them because they've they've lost a few targets this season compared to the last couple of couple of seasons, of course. So he's um, been their permanent one, and it's paying dividends for them. Aaron, speaking of talent, we've got young Brody Lake in the Southern Districts side. He'd no doubt be quite disappointed that he wasn't picked up in, in the draft. What should his approach be from here? I mean, obviously he's playing today. Do you think that the fact that he's playing for Southern Districts 
Is that a good move now, or should he just be having a complete break and focusing on going to a team down south in the next season, 2021? Um, yeah, look, it's, it's probably really difficult to say. I, I do know that from uh, experience, both knowing uh, young players that are draft eligible coming through the system, being in Darwin uh, and not getting drafted, uh, quite a few of them have actually just fallen by the wayside. Yeah. Uh, a little bit disorientated with footy. So for the fact that he's still out here and playing for for his home club, I think um, is is a great sign. Uh, but yeah, for, for him, you know, and he's obviously got a, a really good coach and mentor there in Matty Canard and some really strong leaders within his uh, senior playing team that he can uh, bounce off uh, in terms of ideas and, 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 and how we should approach his footy. But um, certainly it, it's all a little bit between the ears for a lot of these younger players. You know, they can feel really down and disappointed they didn't get an opportunity. But for, for Brody, you know, my, my advice for him would be to, you know, take it as a learning curve. He's got an extra 12 months to, to develop himself and give himself an opportunity. And that, whether that's here in the NTFL and, you know, through... Uh, AFL with NT's uh, relationship with the Gold Coast Suns, trying to get in, in through those sort of doors, or whether he goes down south at the state league level and try, you know, applies his trade at the SANFL Waffle, which you know has been pretty successful with a Ben Rioli type that has you know, mm -hmm. gone down and you know may may or may not have given himself a, a chance to get drafted, but you know plays in a premiership you know, yeah, his that's first right. year down there. So you know, in terms of you know, the, the AFL's not the be-all, end-all for, for these young, talented players. The fact that you can go down there and be a, you know, a, a trailblazer for, for NT footy, like the, you know, the likes of, of those that have gone before us, you know, have gone down and, and may not have needed to play at an AFL level, but gone down and, and played some really strong, uh, at some really strong, successful teams and leagues. And he hit the nail on the head, Aaron, when he said that he's out here playing football. So he hasn't dropped his head, which we see a lot of the a local lot. guys, um, you know, and we don't see them out here for a while or, or a bit stagnant. So. I think that's the, the key indicator that he's he's disappointed, but um, he knows that's not over. His dream isn't over as just yet. Tash, the uh, teams breaking from their respective huddles and going into the places. Your tip and why? Oh, I'm going to go with Nightcliff. Just to, you know, it's wet weather footy out there as well. I know Districts beat them last time, but just looking at their team list, very strong across all areas, and I just think that they'll um, through the midfield is where they'll um, win the game. Aaron. <laughs> I'd love to sit on the fence here, but an interesting tactic, though. I see uh, Trent Melville has started on the bench for the Nightcliff Tigers, so the, the mind games have already started between you know, two of the, uh, the the better coaches around the league in Chris Barks and, and Matty Cannard. So Melville starting on the bench, you know, one of the more prolific goal kickers for, for Nightcliff and certainly adds another dimension to their to their forward line. Um, just uh, throwing off the, uh, the strategies and tactics of the opposition club. Aaron, tip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, He's nearly got a oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 runs on the board. Uh, I'm hoping it's going to be a really good game, but you would expect, uh, yeah, not the you know, they're, they're in the prime position to, to win tonight. Well, the big men are in the middle. They're big, aren't they? They are big guys. <laughs> At Southern Districts, we see Patrick Gallo. He's been in pretty good form for the Tigers. Jackson Bow on the other. Natasha Medbury to get us underway. The umpire throws it up. And none of the Ruckman get a touch there, but it looks like Nightcliff picks it up through Philo, tries to get off to a teammate. Quick hands here, Nightcliff still can't clear the centre. Now they do. It's out wide. And the mark's taken by the Nightcliff player just on the wing. It's in front of his interchange box there. So that was Mott. Daniel Mott kicks it into the 50. Underneath, it's a Nightcliff player. Bounces off his chest, comes straight back out to Philo. Philo off one step, just puts it up and under in the hot spot. It bounces. Nightcliff players are around there, shovels out the ball. Numbers here for districts. They should be able to clear it under a bit of pressure. Gets it to Lionel Ogden. Quick hand pass. His teammate can't take it. The footy's like a cake of soap out there at the moment. Plays all around it. It's still near the Nightcliff goal. And the umpire says, give it to me. And he's going to ball it up about 15 metres around from the Nightcliff goal. And in the goal square is Cameron Islet. No mucking around here by the central umpire. Ooh. Going up really high for Southern Districts with Joshua Innes, but comes down in favour of the Crocodiles. A long kick out, and that's got to be interference, surely. A push in the back is the call going against Hugo Drogamuller. Southern Districts to take the free kick. Nice little chip in board for the Crocodiles. Comes to Dean Staunton. Fires in a pass. A good-looking one it is, too, to Bosley. Didn't take the mark, but was infringed. Centre wing now. Jonathan Paris, the man on the mark. Bosley, another one has been a really good target up forward for them. Long kick inside, 50. And almost out of nowhere, the mark taken by the Crocodiles. The pack was forming, but Jonathan Ross 
with a head of steam up, just ran and placed himself in a really good position, takes the mark, and is now going to have a crack on goal. Right of centre. On the chest too, mind 50 you. 50 metres out. Get <laughs> Aaron Watlock's basket. comment on how just how that piece of play <laughs> opened up there for Southern Districts in a moment. So Jonathan Ross now to have the first shot on goal for the afternoon. Going to fall short into the goal square, belted through off hands by the Tigers. And a behind is registered. Aaron, how, how did that happen? Oh, he's a, a phenomenal work rate there from Ross too. He just he was able to lose bowls. who was his direct opponent there, and he ended up marking that ball just inside 50. But yeah, he had him a pretty pretty hard strung with his work rate there, which is a great effort. Kick it with the kick out goes straight to Bowden. No, that was Bailey. So Nightcliff here through Philo again. I think that was oh, a mark taken by the district player in Zach Smith. He's switching the play through the midfield here. Good kick as well, finds his teammate in the middle. Puts the shepherd on. Lionel Ogden's there, gets the handball back, goes back to his teammate. Kicks it to the threat, into the 50, looking for Ross again. Ross is in the right position. Can't take the mark this time. Regathers. No teammates are there to help him. Nycliffe players around the footy here in a dangerous spot for Nycliffe. Well, the defenders, what the umpire going to call, he says play on. Ross gets it on the left foot. Bounces into the goal square and it's rushed through for a behind. So another behind to the Southern Districts. And Nightcliff yet to score after three minutes in the first quarter. Jonathan Ross making his presence felt already. The kick in goes to Philo. He's allowed to run free. Kicks long now out towards Cameron Isla. Takes a good mark in front of Michael Bowden. They often match up those two. Kick comes off the side of the boot there for Isla. Dominic Brew couldn't take it. Contest now in the middle of the ground. Tigers gather the footy beautifully through Thomas Boyd. Just strides away through midfield. Long kick down to the forward 50. And a free kick paid against the Tigers. I think it might have been Kyle Emery. And a 50-metre penalty. Ryan Moo delivered the ball back and then immediately ran across the mark. The Cardinals in, Aaron. Yes, and especially in these conditions as well. Yeah, you know, the ball's going to be on the ground a lot. You just can't afford to be uh, giving away easy kicks like that. Districts now through the middle. The ball comes to Luke Kyle. He's had a couple of touches already. Nice spot-up kick into attacking 50. It was beautifully delivered. Districts were well set up. And a mark taken for the Crocodiles. Gee, I'm glad I tipped Southern Districts. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on, it's only four minutes gone. <laughs> They're looking good already, Southern Districts here, but at least early stages, they are well and truly matching the Tigers here. And the mark taken by James Cetus, of course, a former Tiger. Their third shot at goal for this first quarter. Kick on its way by Cetus. He makes no mistake whatsoever, puts that one straight through the middle. So Southern Districts now, 1-1-7. Our scoreboard, Nycliffe, yet to score four and a half minutes in to this first quarter. Aaron Motlop. Yeah, it was a great work right there from Cetus as well. Again, he started in the middle and just been able to work forward as well and catch his opponents off guard. It's uh, yeah, a great result from them. And what I've really noticed going inside 50 the last few times for, for Southern Districts is that their ability just to lower the eyes and actually kick to advantage of their players. We've seen Ross on a couple of times get the ball out and took one mark, uh, a bit unfortunate they dropped the other, but uh, you know that one again, just being able to kick to the advantage of the players leading. And I noticed also a district's play went straight into the rooms and to the um, interchange there, so just keep an eye on that. Back in the middle, district's here with the clearing kick. It's to the top of the 50. Paris can't get there, tries to trap it. Nathan Brown's there as well, kicked off the ground by district's. Now it's into the, their 50. Number of players trying to get around the footy. Good pick up there, runs into trouble. The Nycliffe defender, Brown, can't get rid of it. The umpire says play on. I thought he dropped that. Number of players trying to put pressure on. Districts here, still at the 50, trying to get the ball at. Number of players, here's that Ben Armat, Jr. We probably have to call him. And the umpire's now found a free kick. Just a bit of a scuffle going on there. So I think Nathan Brown, no. One of the other Nycliffe defenders has the free kick in Butcher, that's Danny Butcher, kicks it out wide to centre wing, missed the mark there, it's the tar target, McAdam picks it up for Districts, kicks it inboard, easy mark taken, delivers it into the 50 here for Districts and an easy chest mark in the end taken by the Districts player in Andrew Bosley, so already that's a couple of attacking plays at Districts and he plays on quickly, catches them all out and snaps and I reckon he's got it he's happy he's got the finger up as the district's up there second geez it wasn't a good looking no. kick to, to play on but he knew as soon as he he kicked it that it went through so districts two one 
13, leading Nightcliff yet to score after six and a half minutes. Tash, I think that ball went as high as the lights. I think wow. that was uh, <laughs> that little quite a mongrel <laughs> kick that did. Caught that in the belly of the ball there, but uh, yeah, well done there to Bosley as well to, to kick their second goal. And geez, they're up and about at the moment. I wish I tipped these tricks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, and I can't say I did. I did sit on the fence, <laughs> yeah, Aaron. You did. I didn't allow you to. And all, all players are back out on the bench as well for districts. Oh, good to see. Gee, Bosley, he was confident from our angle here. I was oh. nowhere near as confident as he was. I thought it was out of bounds on the full. Yet to score here, the Nycliffe Tigers. Ball back in the middle. Gallo up against Bowen. Gallo won it down initially. Tigers have ball in hand. Slapped forward. Ogden now from half back. A little chip up through centre wing. Uh, almost a good mark there to Bowen. Lake was there about, but couldn't get hold of the footy. Bowen in again, delivers by hand. Dalhouse takes it, flicks a handball out to Cedar. Steps one way, then the other. Tackled by Bowen and brought to ground. The high up and under. Good mark. Districts up and about here. Brad Valance. Haven't seen a lot of him this season. Kick inside to Bosley. He's offering a good target. Comes off hands to Paris. His kick up and under. There's a clash and a free kick paid. And the free kick, and now advantage goes to Dalhouse. He had the shot from dead in front, 35 out, and he's missed to the left for the minor score. So Bowles with ball in hand. No one quite knew what the free kick was for, but Bowles now to bring the ball out. Bowles kicks it. Now centre wing. Bowden underneath it, Bowden underneath it, sorry, and it goes out of bounds in front of the district's interchange. So a boundary throw in about 70 metres around from the district's goal. Grandstand side here. It's over eight minutes gone in this first quarter. Nightcliff yet to score. District sitting on 15. Adam with an easy touchdown with a tap down. Players aren't there. District trying hard to get it out. So Nightcliff stuck on the 50 here. Good tackle and Nightcliff player. Districts again get the ball out there in the clear. Gets it out to Staunton. Staunton with a lovely delivery to that man Ross. No one's going near him at the moment. He's taking all the marks on his chest. I reckon that's it. That's the their fifth mark inside 50 already, Aaron. Yeah, I think so. And he's uh, he's got a favourable matchup as well. We know that uh, uh, you know Bowles are, is their sort of setup man, and, and Ross at the moment is just playing a little bit off him, and he's getting a lot of the ball. At the moment. Kicks it from 45, and it goes out of bounds on the full. So a free kick here to Nightly. Probably better to take a little bit more time with this wet weather. But looking very, very dangerous, Ross inside the 50, and so are Southern Districts. Uh, Ross needs to make sure that he puts a score on the board soon just to really put the pressure on Bowles, but he's playing some good footy. Butcher now brings the ball back into play. Close to the boundary line. Did anyone get a touch on that? I don't think they did. I reckon they all missed it. Boundary umpires called it, so it will be a boundary throw-in. Very fortunate, perhaps, there, the Tigers. So the setup here, 65 from the Southern Districts goal. Boundary throw in, grandstand side, kicking towards the airport end. Drogamuller up high, wins it down. Cetus couldn't take it. Cameron Islet goes through. He's taken high, and that will be the call. Right call there to the tackle laid by Billy Rolfe for the Crocodiles. Islet now from left half back. He just wanted that footy, didn't he, Cameron Islet? Got the little goatee going, Cameron Islet. Close to the boundary again, this kick. And off hands. And out of bounds. Again, the boundary umpire, really good position. Had a close eye on that. Dominic Brew takes his place on the ground, replacing Butcher. And they'll have it another go again. Right at centre wing, grandstand side. Boundary throw and both just wrestle each other. The Ruckman, the umpire lets it go. Quick kick out of the pack, close to the boundary line again. And it goes out of bounds, 70 metres around from the district's goal. Just a bit of an arm wrestle here. So Nightcliff just tightening, tightening yeah. up a little bit around these stops. Stop Ten minutes, minutes gone into the game as well, Tash. And Nock, uh, districts are really controlling the game at the moment. A lot of inside 50s. I think Nightcliff had gone inside their forward 50 twice in those 10 minutes. So a bit of work to do. Phil Wills with the clearance kick from the stoppage. Rogamola's underneath it. Comes to ground. Holt Fitz is there. Can't gather. Nightcliff goes back to Wills. Wills looks for something up forward, but he's tackled as he kicked it. Goes out of bounds on the full. So a free kick here to District. So just the pressure that are a bit is being applied to, to Nightcliff is a uh, is unstoppable at the moment from the from Southern Districts. Jesse Clark here to take the free kick. Half back. Steps well, tried to step around Melville, gets a handball away. Melville takes the footy, almost tackled by Ogden. Got it to Drogamulla. Drogamulla now with the opportunity to go long. He does that. Emery was in good position, but the ball skids away from him and out of play. So not even a score yet here for the Tigers. 
We've gone 11 and a half minutes, 2 3 15 Southern Districts. Tigers yet to score. Boundary throw in five metres around from the behind post. Left forward pocket kicking to the Michael Long Learning Centre end. Players wrestling here as they're setting up. Droga Muller to go up. Gets it down. Emery in there as well. Melville waiting back in the goal square. Liam Holt fits cruises in. He's bundled out over the boundary line and they'll do it all over again. 30 metres around left forward pocket. And Nycliffe just controlling, I should say, Southern District's just controlling this play for the moment, Aaron. Yeah, certainly. And they've got to take advantage of uh, Hugo Drogamola. He's won a lot of their taps in the first few minutes of the game. Midfielders just haven't been able to capitalise. I think if they can get one here, it'll give it a, get them up and about to start the game. And again, as Aaron said, Drogamola wins the tap down, but they couldn't make the advantage. An up and under kick just goes up in the air, straight down. And a good mark taken by... Cetus? Cetus yeah, Cetus, I think that was. So in the left back pocket finds a teammate in Innes. Innes goes across. It's a dangerous kick. It's landed in the arms of Nycliffe. Gets the hand pass out to Philo. Philo boots it to the top of the square. Emery's underneath it again. There's three Crocs players to two. Nycliffe well done to Ogden. Gets it back to McAdam. But Nycliffe here with the two against three. Hits the post as he goes for the shot on goal. So well done there to the Nycliffe players. I think that was... Jorgensen, Adam Jorgensen, and so it's gone through for a behind. So the first register for Nycliffe after 13 minutes in the first quarter. Michael Bowden bringing the ball back into play. The mark is dropped out there by Jordan Bailey for the Crocodiles. So pressure coming now. The defence, however, working hard here for the Crocodiles. Ball in hand. Ball comes out to Bowden by hand. He just sockers it away and under pressure from Emery. Ball is out of bounds on the full. Trogamulla, the man on the spot. He'll take the free kick. Out on the scoreboard side. He's looking confident as well, isn't he? <laughs> man on the mark about 45 from goal. And Trogamulla, when he kicks, will probably be only a few metres in from the boundary. Islet offered a lead. Trogamulla now with the kick. Long kick, high up and under. Will fall in the goal square. Players set. Bowden got the... Punch away, falls to Liam Holtfitz. Oh. Great left foot kick back towards the goal square and just floated to the left for a behind. So two behinds in a row here to the Tigers. 14 minutes down, 15 plays two Southern Districts in the lead. Kick out here by McAdam. The boundary and it goes out of bounds. Right, the umpire says throw it in. So 65 around, or 55 around from the Nightcliff goals. It's going to be a boundary throw in, grandstand side. So they've stopped the flow of districts here at the moment. Bit of a, what they needed to, Nightcliff. Drogamala gets the ball down to Islet. Well read by Islet. Gets it to Wilson, kicks it into the hot spot, but it's chopped off there by the districts player. Can't take the mark. Quick hand pass to Kyle Emery. Emery on goal and kicks the first goal for Nycliffe. So Kyle Emery kicks the first, his first goal of the game and the first goal on the board for Nycliffe. So Nycliffe still trailing Southern Districts 1 2 8 and Southern Districts at 2 3 15. 15 minutes gone in the first quarter. Certainly going to happen that uh, that goal there. Nycliffe, they had a bit of a purple patch with their momentum and their pressure around the ball, especially in their forward line. So uh, it was a great reward there for Emery as well to, to get on the end of that uh, great front and centre there from Jorgensen to, to register their first goal for the game. And, you know, it just puts the pressure back on to, di to districts at the moment. They've played really well this uh, this quarter. But, uh, yeah, Nycliffe are, are coming really hard at the moment. So score check here. 15 minutes gone in this first quarter. Districts 15, Nycliffe 8. Ball back in the middle. Jackson Bowen up high against... Robertson gets the ball forward. Philo maintained good body position. Wins his own foot. He did beautifully. Little left foot chip up towards Drogamulla. Nice little wrestle between he and his opponent there in the form of Josh Innes. But they see the ball out of bounds for a boundary throw in. At about half forward. Left half forward for the Tigers. So another opportunity. They've pushed it forward again. So the momentum just swinging a little bit here. Robertson in the ruck contest. Didn't take the footy. Nycliffe now take it, a kick up towards Islet, taken off hands by Cetus, out the back to McAdam, high up and under from him, up through half back, Brain. Just kept his eyes on the footy, extended the hands, took the mark really nicely, now puts it into a dangerous position, up towards Emery, body position was good, couldn't take the grab. District's defence working hard, so too the Nycliffe forwards though, in goes Jorgensen, so too Emery, 
Tackles being laid, ball spilled. Nightcliff have won a free kick. The umpires called it. This ball spilled out, and the umpire said it was incorrect disposal. So Drogamulla in the game and finds himself on a 45 degree angle, having a shot right of centre from 40 metres out. He's worked hard in this last five minutes, Aaron. Yeah, he certainly has. And like I said, he's, he's won the majority of the taps that he's been involved with around the ground and, and in the centre. So it'll be great for his confidence as well just to keep on growing there if he can finish off a shot here and uh, potentially get the, his team a, a one point closer. So Hugo Drogamala crosses 50, runs to 40, kick on its way. Looks good off the boot. He sounds pretty happy. I could hear him from here. And the players go to him and congratulate him. Good kick, Hugo Drogamala. They're right back in this game. 2 3 15 Southern Districts. Nightcliff 2 2 14. 17 gone in the first quarter. Be uh, good for his confidence, big Hugo, as he comes for a, a well deserved breather. He's played really well at Sonar Ford and in, in the ruck, just pinch hitting there. And, you know, got his, got his side back into the game, I reckon, and, and he's probably his uh, his pressure and his dominance around the ground has certainly filtered down to his teammates as well. Well, when you're seeing a big goal of that laying tackles yeah. too, winning those sorts of free kicks in forward 50, that's pretty good. The yeah, pressure so. applied by the Nightcliff forwards and was that in the last couple of hmm. minutes was created that goal. So back in the middle, umpire throws it up, Ruckman go at it, Adam wins it down, missed by Philo, Districts pick it up, trying to get it out to Lake, Lake applies the tackle. Numbers here for Nightcliff. It's a quick handball out, still in, in the middle of the field here, and the umpire's found a free kick. Advantage goes to Districts. No one knew where it was going, oh, but good a good chop-off mark there by the Nightcliff defender right on the 50. Just looking, Nathan Brown breaks. That's where he looks to, right in front of our commentary box. A good mark by Brownie. Got it. Centre wing here, grandstand side goes up the line looking for Cole Emery and just takes it over the boundary in front of the Nightcliff interchange. So 18 and a half minutes gone in the first quarter. Nightcliff trailing by one point and a boundary throw in. Yeah, some good play here. The Nightcliff defence really starting to tighten the screws here. Ruck contest, one down, almost taken away by Jordan Bailey for District. Still working hard at it. Handball comes out to Charlie McAdam. Goes by hand himself back towards the middle of the ground. Just too much handballing, really, from Southern Districts. Now the Tigers in control. Handball came out to Emery. He drilled a pass to Islet. Couldn't handle. Comes back to Emery. Goes to Wills. Wills to Emery. Put it on the boot. He does. Then he disappoints me by putting it out of bounds on the full. Just a little bit of overhandling, perhaps, Aaron? Yeah, a little bit. The, the conditions obviously didn't help that to uh, trying to be a little bit too cute with the hand pass, but certainly the the uh, the right thing there, trying to bring your teammates into the play. But uh, District's done really well there to try and put that pressure on. They outnumbered uh, Emery and Wills there and, and be able to force that turnover with an out of bounds on the pool. So Rolf with the free kick. The defensive 50 here for Districts. He points up. He's going up and under, straight down the ground and a big thump there by Dean Robinson straight over the boundary. Got up pretty high, the district's player in Robinson. I thought he probably could have had a crack at taking a mark, but he's he's done the defensive thing and thumped it over the boundary line. So a boundary throw and coming at it again. Bowden wins that one. Comes forward to the pack, the stoppage again. Philo, good hand pass out to Wills. Wills takes it over the boundary line. Big hit put on him by Valance. I think that was. And another, no, the free kick is going to Brody, Brody Philo. I wasn't quite sure what that was for, Dominic. Yeah, Signal was a high tackle. His long kick up towards Liam Holt fits. He takes that mark really nicely. Just outside 50, now called to play on. He does do that. Drills a right foot pass up towards the goal square. Off hands. Islet was there. So too Emery. Now Ogden in the action for the Crocodiles. Can he flick the ball out? He's caught with the ball underneath him. And the umpire says that he will take it deep in that left forward pocket. 14 plays 15 here. District's in the lead. 20 and a half minutes gone. A ball up now. Deep inside. The Tigers forward 50. Neither Ruckman could get their hands on the ball. Oh, it's just flicked out too easily here to Liam Holt Fitz. He's not going to miss that, is he? Just palmed off to him. Was almost just thrown to him. He's taken the footy right in front of goal. Snapped it on the right boot straight through. And before you know it, Tigers in the yeah. lead. <laughs> yeah, uh, w wouldn't do uh, Matty Cannard... Um uh, <laughs> stress levels, any any uh, any harm there? He's uh, geez, Liam Holt fits. It was a right place and right time there. And I guess the one uh, worry for for Matty Cunard is that maybe he just doesn't have anybody quick enough to be able to guard uh, Liam Holt fits if he's in that forward line creating havoc. So you saw there, he just sort of 
zipped out of nowhere there, got into space and be able to rove that, that snap on goal. And the man that's just gone to him is probably the only one that might, yeah. might, <laughs> might be, be able, able to do his line of Walton. <laughs> <laughs> so back in the middle, Biello against Drogamola. So handballed out by the district's player. Brain has it, goes backwards to go forwards here. Nightcliff wheels, creates a path, kicks it forward. Tried to get it to a teammate. Well picked up there by Knight with good hands in this wet weather. Back to Zach Brain. He's tackled well. The umpire's going to call it. That was a great tackle put on by Titsis. What's he going to do? There's nothing much on. So he just goes to a spare player in Dean Staunton in the midfield. No one around him. Plays on. Goes through the centre square now. Looks up forward. Can't take the mark. Was his um, district's teammate. Comes to ground well picked up there by Bosley. Bosley looking for Ross. And Ooh. Ross is hit after he takes the mark. The umpire says that's okay. So Jonathan Ross has taken the mark. He's going to have to kick it from about 45 on a 45 degree angle. And we're right behind this kick. He's dangerous up there, isn't he? He is. He certainly is. And this is, I think, his third or fourth mark um, inside mm. that forward 50. So he's had a great start to the tournament. As he comes in, kicks it from about 48, shanks it, goes across the face of the goals in a dangerous spot here again, and it's going to roll out of bounds. No, it's still in. The umpire says play on, picked up by the district's player, tries to hand pass to an opponent, can't pick it up. Nightcliffe here under the pump, the defenders, they get a clearing kick out, and it's going to land in the safe arms of Cameron Eilert. Takes that mark at right half back, does Eilert, plays on quickly, looking for Trent Melville. Couldn't take the mark, McAdam gathered, passes it to Cetus. Kicks dangerously into the middle of the ground. Shoved out of the way was Jordan Bailey. And a free kick to be paid? Yes, it is. And it will be paid, I think, for that push. Let's go further back here. So Districts with the ball in midfield. A little bit of movement comes from forward. Now Bosley on the long lead. Very late. He looks to go to him and just gets nudged under the footy there by Jonathan Paris. Jaden Kickett grabs hold of the footy. He keeps running, gets the handball away to Paris. Did well from half back. Districts, though, mark taken at half back and a 50 metre penalty here. Must have been for going over the mark. Sideways, maybe? So in the corridor, districts have the footy. The man on the mark will be placed on the 50-metre arc in the corridor. The Southern District's here, 23, 24 minutes gone. 20 plays 15. Nightcliff with a five-point lead. Can the Southern Districts Big claw kick. this back <laughs> and take the lead at quarter time? Kick on its way. And the kick is off target and out of bounds. So no additional score after that kick on goal from the Crocodiles. So at quarter time here, Nightcliff lead the game. 3-2-20 to South... Love exploring the Territory? If you do, it's good to know that with TIO Comprehensive Car Insurance, if you have an accident covered by your policy, we're here to help. With the reasonable cost of towing, as well as your additional emergency accommodation and travelling costs. So get out there and explore. Get a quote today. TIO. We're for Territorians. Head on in to Kazali's Palmerston Club. Business meetings, coffee breaks, or just unwinding, Kazali's has you covered. It's the perfect spot for a catch up with friends with stylish function areas suitable for any occasion. Sensational meals. Our family friendly bistro has plenty of delicious options. All the latest machines in our modern gaming room. Get around the pool tables and prove your skills. Fancy a flutter? We've got full betting facilities available. Kazali's Palmerston Club, making a difference.
Time to escape, cause I'm in need of warmer weather. Sail upon the stream to find there's someplace better. And I'm going far and wide. Ooh. Great Northern Brewing Co. The beer from up here. Intersport, new concept store now opening Casuarina Square. Come in and check out a world-class shopping experience. Dedicated sports zones. Now stocking only the biggest brands in tennis, tennis. Cricket. cricket, fitness from treadmills to benches, boxing, boxing. Swimming. swimming, darts, pool and table tennis. For awesome service and advice, Come and see it. still locally owned and operated, the all-new Intersport concept store. Now open at Casuarina Square. AFL Northern Territory would like to remind spectators that congregating at the team huddles is not permitted during the breaks. Two Unbelievable. Of the games big. Only chasing, chasing 90. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Might need to cut those Grandstand highlights to about 30 seconds. Live on ABC Radio and ABC Listen app. And you know. Districts now through the middle. The ball comes to Luke Kyle. He's had a couple of touches already. Nice spot up kick into a Dakin Test over already. Eh? Kick on its way by Cetus. He makes Can no mistake oh, whatsoever. Puts that one Just straight through the middle. Two and a half. Easy chest <laughs> mark in the end. Taken by the district player. In what else? Back here at Marara Oval now. The players just about to break from their huddles here. Instructions being given, and Aaron right in front of us here. You can see Matty Cannard really delivering his instructions, can't you? The boards are up. What would he be saying to them, do you think, at the moment? Yeah, look, he'd be, he would have been stoked about that first sort of 10 or 15 minutes of the game. They really had the game on their terms, and uh, I'm not sure for whatever reason. I think Nightclub just rose a couple more levels and really came to the party, and their district sort of did, wasn't able to respond. Although, uh, certainly we discussed before quarter time, uh, during the quarter time break, it, the, the the district's players just trying to hit the scoreboard a little bit more just to create that little bit of extra pressure when these type of games are really close and the, the weather is like it is but it's wet and slippery if you can hit the scoreboard and really capitalise on those goals you you really create the the, uh, the pressure on the opposition especially you know a team that's out out on the on, on top of the ladder and you know the reigning premiers back to back premiers so that you know you put a bit of doubt in their mind by hitting the scoreboard and, and kicking truly interesting a player that we talked about in our pre-match, Brody Lake uh, yeah. hardly had a touch Andrew, in, in Andrew, that first quarter. Andrew Hodges, the, the backline coach, had a, had a long chat to him, not only just a, as soon as he went out to the huddle, but also walking back to the interchange here. So it's looking a little bit flat, but... Yeah. Certainly had a good player on him as well. I think uh, in Thomas Boyd, he's probably one of their better backmen as well. Really tight checking and plays up at that sort of centre-half back area. So that's where, uh, where Young Lake was. So... Yeah, a bit of a hard position to play, as they say, the, the centre half forward area. Natasha Medbury to get us underway here in the second quarter. So the Ruckman, Bowen and Gallo go at it. Gallo just manages to get it down for districts, but straight to Brody Philo, who gets Brute on the ball, kicks it up towards the 50. It's going to bounce out of bounds in front of Wilson. Couldn't quite get there to get the mark, so there's a boundary throw in 65 metres around from the Nightcliff goal grandstand side here. So trailing by five points, Southern Districts. Boundary thrown the boundary umpire didn't even care if the ruckman weren't there, which is what we want to see. Fast footy. McCadam with an up and under kick close to the boundary. Nearly a mark taken there and it goes out of bounds again. So 15 metres gained here for Southern Districts. Gee, that was Jordan Bailey with the fly there. That was an impressive effort. <laughs> in, the, in these conditions, uh, some of the marks that they are actually pulling off is, is pretty good. The umpire, boundary umpire just walks in. Again, Gallo and... Bowen set, but the ball just bounced in front of both of them. The umpire didn't call it back, allows it to go. So Nycliffe here through Brown, kicks it into the 50 at the back is Kyle Emery. Does it get there? No, it doesn't. But coming through is Phil Wills. Couldn't pick it up. Liam Holt fits is there, trying to get it back to Wills, and it trickles over the boundary line for another boundary throw-in, but this time 45 metres around from the Nycliffe goal. 
Liam Holt fits and Philip Wills, also Jorgensen there. Really important players. Jorgensen and Liam Holt fits in particular having an influence in that first quarter. Drogon Muller now, speaking of influence, taps it down. Liam Holt fits, almost stole it away, has a second crack at it, gets a handball away to Wills. He clears a path for Brew. He just bustles his way through, gets a kick away. Cameron Islet couldn't get a hand to it. Handball comes out towards Jorgensen. Bowden just sockers it off the ground. Now a handball which was intended for him, cut off by Jorgensen, has the shot at goal and misses to the right-hand side. So a minor score, in fact, hit the post for the Tigers. 3-3-21, the first score of this second quarter. The kick-out goes to Michael Bowden. They lead by five. So Bowden finds his teammate in Kyle. I should say they lead by six. Sorry, Tash, 21 to 15. So Kyle's still in the defensive 50. Just a 15-metre kick along the boundary line. Just manages to keep it in as well. That's Staunton out there for Southern Districts. Not much movement up forward, so shut down here by Nightcliff, who goes inboard, trying to pick off the mark and just tackle a number of players there around the Southern Districts teammate in the Ruckman and Gallo. So Gallo puts his hand up, quick ball up. Owen gets it down, kicked off the ground by the Nightcliff player in Mott. Mott close to the boundary line again, then kicks it up. The, the line, Cetus with an up and under kick to centre wing. Under the ball were the Nightcliff oh. players and a good hit put on as well. Nightcliff through Philo. Geez, he's had a few kicks now in this game so far. Kicks it up towards the 50, coming through the centre square. Trying to kick off the ground there. The night uh, was the Southern District player. Cameron Islet is tackled, but manages to get the ball out. Strong hands there. Gets it to Liam Holt. Fits from 50. Has a shot on goal. Is it going to sail over the top? Oh. And it does but through from behind, but Cole Emery was just eyes on the footy and has taken out the goalpost. He looks okay, he didn't do a little Lee Matthews and break no. it, but <laughs> he nearly broke a few of his bones. And a quick kick out by Southern Districts has gone out of bounds on the full, but Cole Emery, geez, that was brave. Yeah, it seems I like he's he, okay, he'd be he, a little bit tender there, but yeah, just no awareness at all that how close he was to that post. And oh, thank goodness unfortunately, okay. uh, he found out the hard way, but yeah, certainly uh, oh. thankful that he, he seems like he's okay. Yeah, geez, that's a, that's a jaw cruncher, that one. Daniel Mott now with the free kick, and you don't often see that. The player kicking out, taking their full measure kick 60 metres and kicked it out of bounds on the full. So Daniel Mott now with the kick in. Target down there, Drogamala flew. Liam Holt fit stayed down. Got the ball to Isle it almost cleanly. Socket off the ground. Did it go through? It was touched by Michael Bowden on the line. Just behind He's opponent registered. As well. His opponent. <laughs> so Bowden now takes off from the goal square. Long kick out. Looking down there for his teammate in Darren Abbott. No mark taken. Tackle laid and spillage. Play on advantage. Dropping the ball was the call. Quick kick down towards Islet. Oh, easy. Kept his feet. Had a kick on goal. And can you believe it? From 10 metres out on the edge of the goal square, it even happens to the champs. He's kicked it out of bounds on the full. I'm mesmerised by that. McAdam with the free kick kicks it up to his teammate in Bailey. That's Jordan Bailey who's slowing up the play, looking for a lead. That's a good mark as well taken by Kyle. Plays on. Don't know why he played on, so it's back in the forward 50 for Nightclub. Bowden tries to kick it off the ground. Jogger Muller's there, gets it to Cameron Islet. Manages to get a hand pass away. Number of players here at the top of the 50. Gets it out here, does districts. Running through is Cetus. Gets it out wide to Staunton. He can't trap it. He's got to go back and find it. But Cetus comes back to help him on centre wing. Looks for a teammate in Smith. No, that's Ross. That's that man, Ross, again. He's come all the way up to centre wing to take that mark. Finds the teammate inboard. So good mark taken by Dalhouse. That's Jay Dalhouse. Goes long, kicks it in the 50. All over his opponent was Jonathan Perris, but manages to keep control of it. Kicks it inboard, looking for the switch. Brain can't take it. Goes across the mall. Comes back to Brown. Brown kicks it forward. And he was taken down after he kicked the footy. So it's a downfield free kick going to Trent Melville right in front of our commentary box grandstand side. Untidy play from Dalhouse. Melville now with ball in hand. Chips in board and goes to Brain or Philo. They raffled it and ultimately Philo took it. Tries to drill a pass in on the left boot. Cut off by Districts. McAdam couldn't handle. Liam Holt fits oh, well sweating done. on it. Grabs it away from the pack. Bangs away with the left boot. 
and kicks his second minor score for the quarter. He is so deadly. He is, he's very dangerous around the footy. And one thing I have noticed this quarter is that dis Southern Districts are just a little bit sloppy with the ball coming out of their back line. They're just giving Nike a, a lot of opportunity to hit the score when they almost pay the ultimate price. Yeah. Ogden now with ball in hand, still deep inside defensive 50. Now kicks long up towards Lake. Couldn't take the mark. Back onto what Island. He lays the tackle brilliantly, Lake. Ball spilled. And as the umpire called it, he has. He's called it a high tackle. Cameron Island takes the free. Kicks long, looking for Emery. Charlie McAdam takes the mark. <laughs> well judged. Made sure the umpire saw it straight away. He wasn't all that sure that the umpire had seen it. Crashing in now from the resultant kick was Nathan Brown. Strips the ball from Dalhouse. Brew comes in. Can he get a handball away? He can. Play on, says the umpire. Up towards Bowden. He takes the footy. Quick kick on the left boot. Out towards Brody Lake and Brain. This time Lake onto it. Oh. And a free oh, kick. Thank you. Free kick paid to Brain. I'm, I'm with you, Tesla. Both players were holding. Free kick and a handball now off to Bowles. Long kick inside 50. Target Melville went high. Got a hand to it. Couldn't handle. Philo did beautifully. Oh, did no beautifully. Way. Snaps on the right boot. The outside of the right. He curled it from left to right as he was falling backwards. And he's kicked a goal as only Philo can do. Brilliant stuff from the Tigers. <laughs> what made that goal even oh. more remarkable was that he knew exactly what he was doing as well. He, he was falling the ground. He knew he was falling the ground. And he was able to just lay it on the boot and just banana it through and, and using the, the wind and, and his own skill to his advantage. And uh, one of the more remarkable goals. I think I've seen um, that was unbelievable. this season. Yeah, just the, the level of skill there that he, that he had uh, right then and there, that sort of small passage of, of time was, uh, yeah, quite If remarkable. I had five minutes of training to line all that up, I still wouldn't have got <laughs> yeah. it. He had about four <laughs> seconds. If that. <laughs> oh, gee. Wow, 30 plays 15 now, and it was districts leading 15 to zero. They now trail by 15. So back in the middle, Drogamulla against Gallo. Gallo... Tap down at the back is Brody Lake can't pick it up, but the ball gets back to him. So Lake gets it forward. It's still in the center square. Good mark taken by Dalhouse. Does he have up forward? Not much. Leads put on by Rossi. Nors that. 50 meter 50. penalty tash. So I think Brown's gone over the mark, has he? So Dalhouse is running. He's trying to get Brown off guard here and nearly pulled oh, back. And he did. So Dalhouse breaks the tackle, kicks on goal, and it's a the middle season. It was a comedy of errors there, but in the end, Jay Dalhouse kicks the much-needed goal for Southern uh, for Southern District, so still trailing Nightcliff 4 6 30. Southern District's 3 3 21. Nine minutes gone in the second quarter. <laughs> Another more remarkable goal as well. I'm not sure what quite actually happened there, but uh, it didn't seem like he went over the mark no, there, Dalhouse. No, I don't think there was no mark really set because the young no. guy wasn't actually there. Yeah, so I'm not sure what it was, and it didn't exactly look like it was a 50-metre penalty as well. Sort of felt like it was more of a 35-metre <laughs> advantage when the umpire called, uh, he'd played on. So uh, great presence of mind there from Dalhouse as well to be able to evade uh, Nathan Brown's uh, tackle, which not many players up here can do. That's so it. It was a great credit to him and the composure just to settle himself and get I, district I, back I, on the scoreboard. It's almost like he bear-hugged him and thought he'd given away the free kick, so let him yeah. go. <laughs> back in the middle now, Drogamala won it down initially. Lake took it, got a handball away. Cetus crashes his way through, delivers by hand. Handball flicked out here towards Robertson. Ooh. District's fighting away here. Ball kicked away from Cameron Islet. That ooh was because it could have been kicking in danger. The ball comes to Jordan Bailey as players have crashed heads behind the scene. The kick in to forward 50 goes to Boyd. Jeez, he looks a calm character, Thomas Boyd. His kick laterally finds Bowles eventually. Can't handle. Opportunity here now for Valance. The Tiger defence really going to work here. Ball flicked out to Bowles again. On the up, going to Paris. On the outer wing. Nice little chip. No mark taken there by Emery, and the ball out of bounds right in front of that scoreboard, which sees the Nycliffe Tigers leading 4 6 30. Southern Districts 3 3 21. Ten and a half minutes gone in this second quarter. Boundary thrown. Drogamola gets there in front, but from behind was Robinson. Gets it down. Good pick up by Michael Bowden. It's a little chip kick looking for a teammate. Couldn't find him. Picked up here by his teammate. But Nightcliff get the ball back away to centre wing. Intercepted by Robinson for the districts, but picked up by the Nightcliff player. Just go backwards to go forwards here, Nightcliff. 
Looking for a teammate in Islet. Good hands at ground level, as always. Cameron Islet gets it out to a spare teammate on centre wing. He delivers it forward, looking for his teammate. Emery's running forward to the footy now. His teammate, Liam Holt Fitz, didn't see him. He was all by himself as well, and he had a ping at the goals and missed it. But if he would have just lowered his eyes, he would have seen that Kyle yeah. Emery was by himself running to the top of the square. So it's through for a behind. Nightcliff 4731, Southern Districts 3321. 11 and a half minutes gone. Ball will be brought in now for Southern Districts by Zach Smith. Long kick oh. out wide. Goes out there to Luke Kyle. Takes the mark. Brings it back in board. Goes to Jesse Clark. Clark on the move. No one on the mark. Nice little chip. Finds a teammate who proceeds to drop the mark. Now he's in trouble. Can he get away? He can. That was Jordan Bailey. Got a handball away to Matthew McClendon who couldn't handle. Tigers arrive in numbers. Free kick given now for a high tackle. It'll go to Brain. Brain now plays on. Kicks a high up and under. And Emery used his body beautifully. He was being held by Zach Smith. He's also won the free kick. But he takes the mark dead in front. And now a 50-metre penalty going, I think, against Dylan Barry as he jogs from the ground. So Kyle Emery will have a crack from the goal square. I think uh, Barry gave that uh, the umpire there some free advice after that decision, which we <laughs> only agreed with. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, disappointing there for districts. I think they had the, the the ball in their control as well and just a bit of a sloppy error, which made the cause a turnover there and created the extra pressure that they didn't need. And, and Nycliffe were always going to capitalise on that opportunity there with a... Uh, Emery was in the, the prime spot, ended up taking the mark, but got the free kick for, for a holding the man decision, which, uh, yeah, which, uh, which led to that 50 metre penalty. So they, while they get a, a step closer, districts with some good play to be able to stem the tie, they let themselves down there and they might have kick away again. And such a silly thing too, because slippery ball, you're having a shot yep. from 30, anything can happen. Yeah, by, by no means a, an easy shot at goal. That the 35 degree angle, a, a little bit of a degree angle, uh, yeah, could have gone anywhere. So back in the middle, Bowen with the punch forward, but the umpires found a free kick. So going the way of Southern Districts to Brew. Or Kyle, sorry. So Kyle for Southern Districts in the centre square. It's a big up and under kick. Pushing the back there from the Nycliffe defender. The umpire didn't see it. It lands outside the 50 here. Enormous amount of pressure being put on Bowen. Bowen, sorry, with the Ruckman with a kick. Comes into the centre square. Moo goes without it. Who goes back in and tries to win it. The big Ruckman's there as well. Bowen Bowen manages to get the kick out. Delivers it to the top of the 50. Cameron Islet's there. Number of districts players with him as well. Good tackle put on by Liam Holt Fitz. Islet gets the ball back. Tries to hand pass over the top to Kyle Emery, but just couldn't get enough grip on it. And Kyle Emery in the end gets caught for a throw. Jeez, Cameron Islet, there's two things I've seen in this game yeah. that I don't usually see. One, he missed a goal from dead in front. And two, he missed oh. the hand pass pretty much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> have such high expectations of yourself. Yeah, the, the human errors that you can do, you see the glare a little bit, which yeah, he'd be disappointed with, but we know he'll bounce back. Jesse Clark, the long kick out towards McAdam. McAdam looking for the push out, but the mark to Philip Wills, and he passes in and finds Cameron Island on the chest. So Islet, inside attacking 50, 45 degree angle. The man on the mark, about 47 from goal. Right of centre. Grandstand side kicking to the airport end in this second quarter are the Tigers. The bench is rotating while they have an opportunity here. 15 minutes gone, 37 plays 21. This would really be to the Tigers' advantage if he could kick this. They led by five points at quarter time. They lead right now by 16. Islet with the kick on the way. Good looking kick off the boot. Oh. We might have seen him make some mistakes before. <laughs> I tell you what, he really made that count. That is a goal to Cameron Islet. Such a professional. They move on to 6 7, 43. Southern Districts 3 3 21. And Aaron, before you know it, it's a 22 point ball game. Yeah, they've just kicked away, haven't they? But, you know, do we expect anything <laughs> anything more, uh, unless, sorry, from Cameron Island after? No. By, by his own standards, a, a couple of mistakes that he probably hasn't made in a, in a very, very, very long time. And he just uh, able to impose himself on the game and, and deliver what his team needed, which was a goal just to extend that lead. And, and like we said before, we know they've, they've pretty much doubled. Uh, district score in, in yep. you know, half a quarter. So, um, yeah, they're, they're playing really well at the moment. Back in the middle, the Ruckman. Go at it. Just equal, can't get it down there to Staunton. He couldn't get his kick away. Picked up by a district player. 
Hawks manages to get a handball to nowhere, but this uh, Nightcliff pick it up. Kicked into Cole Emery, lands at the 50. Ryan moves there to apply the pressure. That's got to be his throw. The umpire didn't see it. Right? Just grabbed the footy and threw it back in. Moo gets there. No players around him. Jorgensen's there. Brewer's well. Tries to fend off a player. Manages to get the kick through and it trickles out of, ba uh, out of bounds for a bouncer throw and just near the right goal, uh, point post. Now, districts have been down a player in the last couple of uh, probably five, ten minutes. Brad Valance has been getting a lot of work done on his groin. Matty Cannard's not happy as the, the coach. He's gone down to the bench to coach. Had a bit of a chat to Valance, so we'll keep an eye on that. Boundary throw in now comes down through Melville. Ogden just soccers straight off the ground. Oh. Bowen, ah. what a good mark. The big Ruckman just sticks out the one hand and drags it in. Intelligently handballs off to Jaden Kicker, who then places a lovely kick onto the chest of Dominic Brew. So Dalhouse on the mark on the paint of 50. The umpire says, no, you come back here and meet her where I'm telling you to stand. And Dalhouse has just ignored him and making his own mark. So it looks like Dalhouse has won that argument, actually. So Dominic Brew, right of centre, 45 degree angle. The man with the number 15 on the back, been a good player for the Tigers this season. Juts out to the left, bangs oh. the big left foot, curls it back in, but just not enough. A minor score for the Tigers. Nightcliff 6 8 44, Southern Districts 3 3 21. Quick kick out finds Staunton, Dean Staunton. Gets it out to a teammate. Out wide, kicks it up centre wing. Good mark taken. Might see who that player is coming inboard. A little bit of a shove in the back. The umpire lets it go. It falls to the back. Can districts pick it up? They can't. Just a bit better here at ground level, Nightcliff. Paris is breaking for him. Has a bounce, mind you, in front of his opponent. And then another one. So coming through the Nightcliff defender, kicks it up to centre wing, looking for Melville. Melville takes it on the bounce, good tackle by McAdam. He's off the footy. The umpire lets it go. Moves there to help him. He's tackled as well, tries to get the handball away. And in the end, Melville just pushes over McAdam. Thought he was unlucky there, McAdam, not to win the free kick. But in the end, it's a boundary throw right in front of the Nightcliff interchange grandstand side here. Good contest between the Tigers and the Crocodiles here. Ticking down towards half-time. 18 and a half gone. There's a sideways throw in by the boundary umpire. Hit Gallo on the chest. In fact, it was Robertson. The ball now in the hands of the Tigers. Good come from behind tackle on Philo. The ball spits out to Ogden really quickly. Now up towards full forward. No mark taken. The Tiger defence goes to work yet again. Kyle laying a tackle. The umpire says... Oh, I will have it, he says. 20 metres out from goal, there'll be a ball up. Southern Districts with an opportunity here. They trail by 23 points. Need to work hard here. They've been outnumbered by the Tigers on many an occasion. Ball one down by the Tigers, goes straight to Jonathan Ross. He's wrapped up in a tackle. And they'll do it all again. 25, 30 metres out from goal. 45 degree angle, the ball up to happen again. Drogamulla to go up against Dean Robertson. Drogamulla wins it down again. Follow, try to soccer it off the ground. The kick comes out for Districts. Up towards Bosley. He gathers. Trying to step around Paris. Confused himself and didn't kick the ball properly. Lake comes charging in. So too Brain. Brain had a soccer, missed it, paddled it forward. Districts now with ball in hand. Little handball comes out to McClendon. Gets the kick away. Cetus is there. Oh, that's a good mark taken down there. And Boyd, again, she's been impressive. Took that mark really well. And now we'll get the Tigers out of trouble. Kicks it out wide, taken just inside the boundary line. Kicks it up to centre wing. Looking for his teammate in Jorgensen. Good at ground level. He butters up, but a good tackle applied by Ogden. Looks in board. Nightcliff here with the numbers. Gets it back to Drogamola. Kicks it into the 50. Under it is Cole Emery on the third grab. He takes the mark. So in these conditions, that, that mark in the end in front of Zach Smith was just too easy. Yeah. So he's going to have to kick it from about 40, 40 metres, 45, and a slight angle. But Cole Emery will usually slot these ones. Yeah, showed his quality there too. Just a, a mark with his hands out, yeah, arms stretched out as well. And, and, yeah, Zach Smith is a really good player. They just, I think, lost a bit of body contact with him, which... Uh, which Emery took advantage of there. And 
This is where he would have had that shot before he got the 50. So we'd find out, uh, you know, how, how difficult these conditions are. And just goes to prove he doesn't take his eye off the footy, does he? Cole Emery. He just, after three steps, delivers it through the sticks. So he's got his third goal of the game, Cole Emery. So he kicked one in the first quarter. He has two in the second. So Nycliffe are just pressing away here. Now they're 7 8 50, leading Southern Districts 3 3 21. And we're 21 minutes gone in the second quarter. Yeah, there's uh. They're just doing it with ease at the moment. The districts did try to come back those couple of minutes there. They felt like they had wrestled back a little bit of momentum and stepped the tide a bit. And, you know, they're not going to just, again, put their foot down again and gone up another level as well. And districts are just struggling to try and keep up with them at the moment. I think half-time can't come quick enough for, for Matty Canham's team. Just getting a lot of numbers around the footy are the Tigers working really hard and it's really starting to show on the scoreboard. 21 and a half gone, 50 plays 21. The Crocodiles are trailing. Need to work hard here. Robertson up in the ruck contest, beaten forward by Drogamulla. Ball pushed forward. Trying to hold it in there, the Crocodiles. And the umpire says, I will have it. Just forward of centre, favouring the Tigers. Getting up last is Dalhouse. Robertson again wins it forward. Comes off the boot there of Daniel Mott. Staunton got a handball forward. Brown cleans up for the Tigers. The little handball comes forward. Bowles gathers, just paddles it to his own advantage oh, well two, done. three times. Gets it around the Ruckman in Robertson. Receives it back from Jorgensen. Runs to 40. Kicks on goal. Kicks the goal. Does Bowles. Beautiful play from Daniel Bowles. <laughs> great, great uh, almost a solo performance, I guess you could say, just in terms of his running from that half-back line and being able to follow the footy up and just stay involved in the play. And a great uh, reward there for, for, for Bowles after Jorgensen really... Uh, he set Jorgensen up with, a, with an easy, uncontested possession and he followed that up and got, got it back. And just a really good composed kick there from Bowles. He's had a bit of a quieter day than normal. He's usually their, their yeah. main sort of set up and link, link up player, but uh, District's uh, Jonathan Ross has had that sort of job on him and have had his fair share of moments as well. But Bowles, um, yeah, it'd be great for his confidence there to get that goal. So we're back in the middle. 23 minutes gone in the second quarter. So Nycliffe leading by five points now. So good tap by Bowen, picked up by Liam Holtfitz again. Doesn't even fumble from ground level and finds uh, Brody Filo on the chest right in front of goal. He's going to have to kick it from well, about 45. This is not beyond Brody Filo. We know he can kick a footy. That was just too easy in the end. Bowen yeah. to Liam Holtfitz, one pick up, kick. Oh, just a Brody Filo on the chest. Just the, yeah, <laughs> the audacity of Holtfitz just to stick the left arm out and just fall on his hands and just one, one clean sweep as uh, Filo goes for goal. So Filo straight through the middle. He drilled it through those big sticks. So Nycliffe have their ninth on the board and Brody Filo has his first. Well, we they're just running away. Has his second, sorry. They're just running away at the moment here, the Nycliffe Tigers. Aaron, what can you say? Oh, I'm, I'm with you. I was laughing. Liam Holt, oh, he's playing just, a different game to everybody yeah. else out there. That was just beautiful to it's watch. It's like it's dry weather footy. It oh, is, yeah. One you, hand. <laughs> we spoke about the, the headaches that Holt Fitz would actually give uh, Matty Canna, but you look at the, who's, who he's next to as well with uh, Ryan Moo, who's not uh, no slouch either, and Sean Wilson. There. It's actually a really quick uh, forward line. That, yeah. you know, those half forwards, they really play up high as well, up through the wings and half backs. So part of Nycliffe's game plan at the moment, and districts need to respond. Robertson in the ruck contest wins it down from Bowen. Got the ball to Dalhouse. He was stripped of the footy. Handball comes out again to the big man in Bowen. Got it to Staunton. Now to the run of Dylan Barry. Little chip from him up towards Bosley. Clears a path against Paris. Tried to shove him out of the way. Paris was good. Equal to the task. Took, took the footy then. Dropped it. Jaden kick it there. He's been wrestled over the line. Doing his best impersonation of a rugby league player there. Popping the ball down over the boundary. And there'll be a boundary throw in. 48 metres around. Left forward pocket in favour of the Crocodiles. Almost 25 minutes gone here. 62, can you believe it? Plays 21. It's a 41-point ball game. Oh, throws it in again. It falls short. The other, this time, I think this is the third or fourth time the, the boundary throw in hasn't been the best, but this is the first time the umpires called it back as the Ruckman reset. So Gallo gets it. Bowen. Gallo gets it forward this time as the siren goes for half-time. Nightcliff are leading here 9-8-62 against Southern District 3-3-21. Love exploring the territory? 
costs of towing, as well as your additional emergency accommodation and travelling costs. So get out there and explore. Get a quote today. TIO. We're for Territorians. Absolutely zero. Zero. Yeah, definitely. It has to be zero. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. I don't think that's asking too much. Domestic violence is everybody's business. And it's not just the physical abuse, it's the things we don't see. It is hurting our families. It is killing our families. A lot of people have been silent to this fact, and I think it's about time we all speak up together and say no more to this form of abuse. No more. No more. No more family violence. No more to the family violence. No more. No more. No more. Time to escape, cause I'm in need of warmer weather. Sail upon the stream to find there's someplace better. And I'm going far and wide. Ooh. Right Northern Brewing Co., the beer from up here. On Territory Roads, anything can happen. So you need to drive to the conditions. Speeding can get you into all sorts of trouble. Dirt roads aren't just dusty. When it's hard to see, they're dangerous. At water crossings, remember, you're driving a motor car, not a boat. High water can be deep trouble. <laughs> all sorts of animals can be on the road, so watch out. And if the weather is bad, slow down, you mob. <laughs> Drive to the conditions and arrive in good condition. The time to kickstart your business is now. Get your message across for the experienced local TV production team at Kick Digital. Cost effective, rapid turnaround, exceptional service. Kick Digital. Television production energised. Schoolwear is the perfect choice for quality custom-made school uniforms. Ideal for all school-related activities. 50 or 500 students, we have what you need. Contact CFS Gear for your free CFS Schoolwear quote today. Getting my hands on the footy and you know, just being with my mates. I like being outdoors. It just makes me happy. I don't like it when I get yelled at. It's pretty embarrassing when someone's shouting at you halfway through the game. It makes me feel like I'm useless and I can't do anything. We're just kids. We're just here to have fun. Let us do what we love. Just let kids be kids. AFL Northern Territory would like to remind spectators that congregating at the team huddles is not permitted during the breaks. The NTFL clubs and umpires would like to share the following events and messages and thank their sponsors for the 2021 TIO NTFL season. For more information, please visit the relevant club or umpires Facebook page.
Matty Cano. Yeah, yeah, certainly would have been the message. And, you know, they they probably couldn't have played any worse in that second quarter as they have, you know, and they've, they've let a, a, a potential lead, a promising start go to waste, but it's not uh, beyond them to try and get themselves back in the game. But they do have to focus on slowly trying to get themselves back into it. About to get underway. As Aaron Motlop says, getting back into it here for the Crocodiles and umpires are almost all set. And to get us underway, Natasha Medbury. Thanks, Tom Nick. So Bowen and Gallo have gone at it all day. Umpire throws it up. Neither advantage to the Ruckman there. Picked up by the nightclub player. Tries to handball to Philo. Philo goes without it. Then Wills is crashing his way through the pack. Good pick up by Staunton. Staunton just hand passes to no one. Back in there again is Staunton. Against Wills, two hard nuts right there at it. Hand passes to Lake. Lake's taken high. The umpire says play on. Nightcliffe managed to get the ball out of defensive 50 here. But he was a bit unlucky there. Brody Lake bounced to Cameron Islet. Takes on his opponent. Gets it to Moo. Moo kicks it into the 50. And a good mark taken back there by the Southern Districts player in Zach Smith. And Zach Smith now flicks it out wide, finds Darren Abbott. Meters in the clear, kicks out towards Cetus. Was not to his advantage. He's just belted over by Jaden Kickett. Coming in to lend some support is Ben Armat. The players run in, the ball held in, and the umpire says, I will have it here at half forward. No addition to the scoreboard here. 62 plays 21. Half-time lead of 41 points to the Nycliffe Tigers. From that ruck contest now, the ball again down towards Darren Abbott. The high up and under. And the mark taken. Can you believe it? Pack form. The Tigers' defence flew. And the mark taken here by Billy Rolfe. Well, you talk about ideal starts. This is exactly what Southern Districts want. A mark directly in front, 30 metres from goal. Billy Rolfe, it's on your shoulders. Can <laughs> you go back and kick the goal? Probably didn't expect it to land in his, uh, in his bread basket, <laughs> but it certainly landed there. <laughs> oh, well, if he kicks the goal, he'll tell you that he just positioned himself yeah. magnificently and read it far better than anybody else. Stops and props, jogs in, kicks on goal. He's very happy. He's done exactly what his coach would have wanted him to do. Well done, Billy Rolf. Yeah, it was a great, great goal there as well. In terms of pressure as well, when you take a mark like that and your team really needs it after, you know, a really tough uh, second quarter, to, to be able to get that one first up and out of the way, not only to get your crowd involved, but also your teammates as well. It was great to see everybody get around him and just try and instill a bit of belief, you know, and a, and a bit of trust back into the team. So that was a great start there from... Uh, from uh, District and a great finish there by Rob. One of the moves that has been made, Aaron, looks like uh, Brodie Lake out here onto the wing yep. playing against uh, Andy Moniz Wakefield. So move from centre half forward. Yeah, and no, I think it's going to be good for him as well. He can use his sort of athletic ability up and around the ground and get himself more involved. Back in the middle. I throws it up. Good work by Bowen. Just to get it down. Good pick up by Philo. Tries to get it out of the pack. Brody Lake's in there, getting around the footy. That's what he needs, just to get his hands on the footy. Young Brody Lake. In there again, but Liam Holt Fitz gets a quick kick into the 50. Picked up by Moo. Gets it back to Liam Holt Fitz. Just taps to himself, taps to himself again. Tries to kick it off the ground, but intercepted by Ogden. Just a quick kick that's going to be taken in the centre square by Nathan, Nathan Brown for the Nightclub Tigers. So Brown immediately goes on the right boot. High up and under inside 50. Target Drogamulla. No mark taken down there. Comes back to Drogamulla. Got the handball away. But Jonathan Ross down there in defence for districts. Get a kick away. Boyd tried to pluck it out of midair. A soccer forward goes to Armat. Good hands from Armat off to Dylan Barry. Has the flying shot from 40 metres out. And misses to the left-hand side. Yeah, he had, just had a bit of composure there. He actually had Bosley all by himself pretty much. He had a two-on-one. Uh, backed himself in, Barry, which is what you want to see. But, yeah, you've got to make the most of those chances. So Boyd takes the mark from the kick-out from Jaden Kickett. Right, centre-half back here. Oh. Just a mungle kick, but underneath it's Philo. Oh, and that's a brilliant mark taken by Philo in front of Jonathan Ross. In these conditions, he's called to play on. Kicks it up the line. Just past centre wing to Drogamola was the target. Liam Holt fits front and centre where you want him to be. Quick kick into the 50 and no, it's a free kick. Cole it's a Emery. Break. Cool. Yeah, just a nudge in the back there against his opponent in Zach Smith. So Zach Smith's going to have the free kick in the defensive 50 here for Southern Districts. He's 1-1 one, one back there, Zach Smith. He'll be very pleased. Very lucky because he's going over his head. <laughs> That's it. Pops a kick up now. 
looking for Matthew McClendon. Got one hand to it. Monty's Wakefield. Great pick up and handball in the one motion to Drogamulla. And Drogamulla was taken without the footy. So I think that might have been Brody Lake who gave that away. Drogamulla on the move immediately. Good kick and finds Ryan Moo unattended. Too many players with too much space for the Tigers inside 50. And so now Ryan Moo just being told here by Liam Holtfitz just to go back and have a shot. Of course he doesn't. He handballs off to the run of Philo. Bangs long and bangs truly. The arms outstretched. He looks for the adulation of his teammates and he gets it. Yeah, it was a great goal there, but also good presence of mind there as well from Philo to run around Young Moo, who might not have made the distance from that from that uh, from that uh, yeah from that distance just outside 50. And for for Moo as well to acknowledge that and, and be able to give off to Philo is obviously a very um, elite kick of the competition. But yeah, you contrast yeah. that to districts going forward with Barry having a shot from 50, where Drogamulla was the same. He was on 50, but he had the presence of mind to lower his eyes and, and spot a, a better option for his team, and he, he found Moo, who, who eventually led to the Philo goal. And I guess it, it, and poor checking as well, because you know Brody Philo loves to kick a goal yeah. more often. Yeah. Hang around, Hang around. Uh, <laughs> he's a teammate to get a quick hand pass. And three he's got now too, three, Tash. Yep. Yep. So back in the middle, need a goal here, Southern District, just to get it back. Comes down to Barry. Barry with a quick kick away. Can't get it. Darren Abbott has it, but he's stripped of the footy. Gets it forward. Good tackle there. Laid by Moo, I think. No, not Moo. It was Jorgensen. Made sure he didn't get into the back of his opponent. And there's a boundary, I mean, sorry, a ball up in the centre square. A number of players just get the feel of each other there. So the umpire quickly throws it up. Bowen gets it down. Tackled without the footy, I thought the Nightcliff player in Butcher was. And there's going to be another ball up right where the last one was. We just need to peg a goal back here, Southern Districts. Owen with an easy tap down, gets it to Liam Holt Fitz. He's trying to get to the footy. He's taken without it. The umpire says play on. Philo picks it up, manages to get that kick around the corner every single time in traffic. Brody Philo. It's taken by Southern District's defender, gets it back to his opponent in McLinden and goes out of bounds. So a boundary throw in about 60 for 55 metres around from the Nightcliff goal. So just under enormous pressure here, the, the Southern District's defenders. Just pays to be clean, doesn't it, Tash, in terms of being, you know, around the centre and the stoppages. Not, uh, Nightcliff are just really clean around the ball and, you know, Districts are just a little bit fumbly and it's creating extra pressure for themselves. Bowen wins that ruck contest down again, tried to find Brew, but the ball pushed forward, goes to Bowles from centre-half forward, bombs long up towards the goal square. Emery dived forward to try and mark the footy. The ball bounces towards the boundary line and Ryan Moo cannot keep it in. So another boundary throw in deep in the left forward pocket, favouring the Nycliffe Tigers. Nathan Brown comes from the ground to be replaced by Sean Wilson. We've gone seven and a half minutes in this third quarter. 40 points is the lead. 68 to 28. The ruck contest, one down by Melville. Districts go in and get it through Cetus. Handball comes out from Clark, goes to Bowden. He's been under pressure all day. Charlie McAdam, a good handball out wide, finds a teammate close to the boundary in McClendon, and he's taken over that boundary line. And a boundary throw in 50 metres around from the Tigers' goal. The pressure continues. The boundary umpire comes in. We've got Bowen and Robinson. Owen easily, front position, gets it to Brew, up and under kick. Doesn't travel very far. Southern District's player could have taken that mark, gets it to Liam Holt Fitz. It's gonna, kicks it out of bounds. I think he was over before he kicked it, so it's a boundary throw and deep in the left forward pocket here for the Nycliffe Tigers. So he's still under the pump here, the District's defenders. He's kicked more with his left foot today, Liam Holt Fitz, <laughs> than what I've ever seen. Yeah, same. The Ruckman set. Shallow throw in again. Easily tapped down by Trent Melbourne. Up and under kick. And Michael Bowden just didn't judge that well at all, but he gets the ball back. Good flip, flick, sorry, to him. Barry that goes. Don Barry goes out of bounds on the full. So just under enormous pressure here, the Southern Districts players. So the free kick is going to the Nightcliff Tigers right in front of our commentary box. Nine minutes gone in this third quarter. Nightcliff 68 leading, Southern Districts 28. Joel Buderick with the free kick. Runs away. 
kicks up towards Jorgensen, who got a little ride on Dean Staunton, and the umpire says, Jorgensen, that was unrealistic. You were never going to take that. And Dean Staunton will take the free kick. Jorgensen arguing his case, of course. Staunton now runs his full measure. There was no one really on the mark. Long kick down towards Bosley. Got a fist to it. Well, did well. Knocked it over the back. Clean pick up from Ross. Gets it away to Kyle. He handballed quickly to Bosley, who kept running. Just socketed it off the ground and socketed it out of bounds. Not necessarily a bad thing. They get the ruck contest and able to reset just in the left forward pocket. So some enterprising play there, Aaron. Yeah, it was a bit, it was great to see as well. Just a bit more attacking and an exciting play there from districts. Really trying to take the game on as well. Boundary throw in was a quick one. One down by Dean Robertson. Straight to the Tiger defence in the form of Boyd. He gets a quick kick out. A good mark taken by Staunton in front of Philip Wills. Kept his eye on the footy and it was coming over his shoulder as he took it. Now called to play on from right half forward. Grandstand side up towards Lake. Couldn't take the mark. Hugo Drogamala grabbed the footy and delivered a handball. Lake brought Wilson to ground. The ball comes to Moniz Wakefield. Long kick from him up towards Emery. Dragged in the mark then spilt it. Had time to pick it up and kick long. Kicks up into attacking 50. Ogden is there, close to the boundary. Kept his eye on the footy. Gathered it. Kicks in board. Goes to Emery. No one can take a mark. Ball slapped backwards in the favour of Philip Wills. He can't take it. And he goes back in and gets it again. Brings it out to Melville. Long kick off the side of the boot. Will fall into the right forward pocket. In fact, it came off the hands of Ogden momentarily. And goes out of bounds, deep in that left forward pocket again. Now the pressure constantly coming here from the Tigers. They lead by 40 points, 68 to 28, 11 minutes gone in the third quarter. They're maintaining the pressure, not too bad at the moment. So Cole Emery has his hand up for the ruck. Another shallow throw in, tries to get it down to Brody Philo that was just screaming through the front of that pack. Good tackle as well. The umpire is going to call him. I don't thought, didn't think he had much opportunity to get rid of that, but the umpire's called it. I think that was in us, Joshua in us. So the free kick is going to Adam Jorgensen. So he's on a sharp angle here, close to the boundary line. About 35 metres out. He's going to have to kick it from about 45. Doesn't have a goal yet, Adam Jorgensen. No breeze whatsoever here. Kicking to the Michael Long end. Tigers looking for their 11th goal. Comes in. Looks good off the boot. It's nice and low, but misses to the near side. So through for a behind. Nightcliff now 69, leading Southern Districts 28. 12 minutes gone in the third quarter. Jesse Clark to bring the ball back into play. Runs out of the goal square now. Being pursued there by his opponent. Long kick down towards Gallo. Comes off hands. Tigers there again in numbers. Ryan Moore was who was front and centre. And he's going to take the free kick because he was held off the footy. It had gone out of bounds. Looked like it was going to be a boundary throw in with the freedom move. Now called to play on. Kicks up towards Drogamala. Got himself underneath it. Emery with an opportunity in the right forward pocket. But the boundary line beats he and Zach Smith to the footy. So they've just transferred the pressure now from the left forward pocket to the right forward pocket. They've done well for Nightclub just to kick the one goal. Yeah, they, they certainly have. <laughs> Boundary throw in now. One down to Moo. Has the quick kick on goal and he's kicked it. What a kick from Ryan Moo. No one's claiming for it to have been touched. It came off the pack. He grabbed it and snapped truly. Pressure, Aaron. It counts, doesn't it? Yeah, it certainly does. And uh, for, we speak about, you know, Nightclub uh, District. Sorry, doing well actually to hold Nightclub to just uh, the one goal for the quarter. You know, we're sort of almost halfway through, through this third quarter. But... Uh, as we said before, just play, pays to be clean in this type of game when it's a wet, you know, and it's tough and it's in tight and, and the bigger bodies are, are, are more better suited for it. And Young Moo's probably one of the smaller players on the yeah. ground, just able to be clean in a contest and get his foot to it. Uh, you know, really gets... You know, I think that's his uh, first uh, goal for the game, yep, yep. but, you know, a great reward for him as well because he, his speed and his pressure around the ball has been uh, integral for, for Nightclub tonight. Back in the middle, Bowen and Gallo. A good jump there. Couldn't get it down to Cameron Islet that was running through, but Phil Wills is there. If you don't get Cameron Islet, you've got the other one there. Tag team they are in the midfield. Drop mark by Trent Melville. Off the ground by the district's play. Just kicks it around the corner, trying to find a teammate. Nathan Brown tries to take the mark for Nightcliff. Can't. Coming through. Good work by Don Barry. Just pushing the ball forward towards the 50 here for Southern Districts. 
Just need to lock it up, and they have. The umpires are going to call. Give it to me, so it's going to be a throw up here right at the top of the 50 here for Southern Districts. Desperately need a goal. Owen easily there with the tap down, but the free kick is going to brew for a hold off the footy. So Dominic Brew now with the ball at centre half back, just goes sideways and finds Boyd. So a very composed game. Thomas Boyd hasn't had a lot of the footy, but every time he has, he's used it really nicely. Straight down the line, looking for Hugo Drogamala. Two hands to it. Ryan moved perfectly front and centre. Got the footy. Got it away to a teammate in Mott. His handball away to Moniz Wakefield. Nice little chip. Ah, Melville was just had his weight going the wrong way. Couldn't get there. Jesse Clark took the mark. He plays on. Brings it back to the other side of the ground now and finds Cetus. Cetus by hand. Went to Kyle. He went straight back to Cetus because the handball put him under pressure. He goes out wide. Tackle, tackle laid. Districts losing the footy here. Kyle comes in. Good pressure from Jonathan Paris. Shoves his opponent over. Who's going to tidy this up? Looks like it's going to be the Tigers. Little handball came from Mott away to Paris. Paris, a low ball inside 50. Emery, one grab, two grabs. Couldn't get it. Jorgensen hit the ball hard. He looked like he might have been taken high. And the umpire says, I will have it. One moment down at half forward for Southern Districts. Next minute, 30 metres out from goal for the Nightcliff Tigers. An enormous pressure here again. The district's defenders, Drogamala with the tap down, doesn't get it too far. Cleared here by Lionel Ogden, just looking for his teammate in Barry out wide. Has enough time here to turn, try and hit up a target in Rolf. Rolf takes it on the bounce, gets around his opponent, kicks it into the 50. No one really there. Bosley's trying to win front position, can't. And it's easily cleaned up here by Bowles for the Tigers and finds Boyd out wide on centre wing. Boyd now with the long kick. Looking for the run there of Emery, but too close to the boundary line. Just nothing up forward there for Southern Districts to kick into, Aaron. Yeah, just no structure at the moment. The, the, the kick, I think, was just a little bit scruffy as well coming in uh, from, from the District's player there. Just needed to be a bit better suited. We had Bosley go back towards goal, just uh, wasn't able to capitalise. And from the ruck contest, Nycliffe working it out really well. Yet again, Michael Bowden with the soccer off the ground, gathered by Bowen, got a handball away to Brew, tries to drill the pass in, but Lionel Ogden, well done. Took a really good mark at full stretch. Inside defensive 50, feigns the handball to McAdam, goes the other side. Now out towards the scoreboard side, Kyle under pressure from Melville. Melville causes the spillage, handball to Brew. He'll charge in at anything, goes in and gets the footy, got it to Melville. Another little untidy handball found Brain. Somehow the ball goes back to Melville. Another handball looking for Butcher, missed him, gathered by Cetus. Jonathan Ross in space. The little kick forward was ter terrific. Now this kick forward is just as good. Jonathan Ross, well done. And Districts with another mark inside 50. Another opportunity to have a kick on goal. The mark taken here by Billy Rolfe, their only goal kicker for this third quarter. Can he kick his second for the quarter? 45 degree angle, right of centre. He's kicking to the airport end on the grandstand side. Man on the mark stands at about 40, and that's Nathan Brown. Crosses 50 now. Kick on its way. He started it left and it came back right and it's gone through for a minor score. So not what Billy Rolfe was looking for. So at the 18 minute mark, the Tigers in the lead. 11-9-75. Southern Districts with that score. 4-5-29. The balls with the kick out here. Takes off. Um, 10 metres and kicks straight up the guts, looking for Cameron Island. Intercepted there, but picked up by Brody Philo. Front and centre runs into his own teammate and Jaden kick it. And just to get his kick away, good pick up by Jonathan Perris. Good work off the ball by Paul Emery. Has Liam Holt fits all by himself, takes it on his chest in front of Lionel Ogden. Not much you can do about that as a defender when you have a clear kick like that coming from the no. midfield, Aaron. No, there's not much <laughs> you can do at all as, as a defender as well. And, uh, you know, when you don't have pressure up the ground on, on those midfielders coming forward, yeah, you're, you're really uh, up against the, uh, the, the tsunami, I guess you could say, you know, you had the, at the will of the guy kicking it. And it was an exceptional kick from Paris, but a great league as, as well from uh, Holt Fitz. So Holt Fitz, 30 metres out, 45 degree angle. So he's kicked a goal so far in this game, one in the first quarter. 
been very dangerous today as well in that forward 50. Created a few goal opportunities for his team. Tries to drill it through the big sticks and it just goes wide, just manages to go over through for a behind. So Nightclip 76 leading, Southern Districts 29, nearly 20 minutes gone this third quarter. Ball brought back into play by Bowden. Long kick out, just chopped off really nicely by Jackson Bowen for the Tigers. G's been good. Now he's kick inside 50. Target was Cameron Islet, was cut off there by Staunton for Southern Districts. Long kick out, looking for Brody Lake. Got hands to it, but was nudged under the footy by Wilson. Brown had it, then lost it. Boyd picks up nicely, brought to ground, got the handball away. Lake in the contest against Wilson. Lake gets hold of the footy, did well. Boyd does as well. Gets hold of the footy again. Went to Will. Surely that footy was out of bounds. Jumping forward nicely, though. The kick was taken by Jordan Bailey at right centre wing. Really good mark from Bailey. Bailey, centre wing here for Districts. Just a short kick, just the 15 metres. Finds Staunton. Staunton with a good kick to a leading Jonathan Ross. Dropped the mark as he hit the ground. Kicked off the ground by the Districts player. Just bounces in front of the boundary line and the umpires called him for deliberate, which it was there. It was only going one way and that was the boundary. So and Wilson with a quick kick finds Boyd in the defence of 50 here for the Tigers. All the time in the world here for the Nightclub Tigers. Up and under kick, just looking for someone to lead, and that's another good mark again taken by that man, Jordan Bailey, on centre wing. Oh, Jordan Bailey, well done. A good grab. What's he done now with the kick? He's popped it up to Rolf, couldn't take the grab. Coming in strongly was Dean Robertson. Got the ball out wide to Cetus. Cetus now have gone again onto Billy Rolf. Rolf trying to spot up Bosley here. It was a good kick. He didn't have a crack at goals. He went to the tall timber. Bosley working really hard here. So too Jaden Kickett. Bosley getting his opponent out of the way. Now coming in his teammate in Kyle. And the ball seen out of bounds for a boundary throw in. At the 50 metre arc on the far side of the ground. The lights really taking effect here now at Marara Oval. The ball tossed in. Bowen got a fingernail to it. I think Robertson might have been hit in the head. He pushes over his opponent now. Tackle laid by Kickett. Ball spills and comes to Darren Abbott. Goes with the left foot kick. I don't think it was intended, but it hit Bosley on the chest and he'll take it any day of the week. <laughs> yeah, you'd be spewing if you were Paris too. You thought you'd have good position on him and then a, a missed kick and it lands in the, <laughs> yeah, the arms of your direct opponent. But uh, it was great positioning there from Bosley as well. When, you know, for, for, for districts as well to be able to get their second goal for the uh, for the quarter, uh, it'd be uh, you know, a, a nice thing for for their for their team at the, at this moment, leading towards the end of the third quarter to get a bit of momentum. Bosley with the kick on goal, he kicked from 25 metres out on a 45 degree angle, and on the sounds of the three quarter time siren, he missed. He's kicked a behind, so. The score here at three-quarter time at Marara Oval, the Tigers 11-10, 76, and Southern Districts 4-6-30. Love exploring the Territory? If you do, accident covered by your policy, we're here to help. With the reasonable cost of towing, as well as your additional emergency accommodation and travelling costs. So get out there and explore. Get a quote today. TIO, where for Territorians. Head on in to Kazali's Palmerston Club. Business meetings, coffee breaks, or just unwinding, Kazali's has you covered. It's the perfect spot for a catch up with friends with stylish function areas suitable for any occasion. Sensational meals. Our family friendly bistro has plenty of delicious options. All the latest machines in our modern gaming room. Get around the pool tables and prove your skills. Fancy a flutter? We've got full betting facilities available. Kazali's Palmerston Club, making a difference.
time to escape Cause I'm in need of warmer weather Sail upon the stream to find there's someplace better And I'm going far and wide Ooh. Great Northern Brewing Co. The beer from up here Sport new concept store now opening Casuarina Square. Come in and check out a world class shopping experience. Dedicated sports zones now stocking only the biggest brands in tennis, tennis. Cricket. cricket, fitness from treadmills to benches, boxing, boxing. Swimming. swimming, darts, pool, and table tennis. For awesome service and advice, Come and see it. still locally owned and operated, the all new Inner Sport concept store now open at Casuarina Square. AFL Northern Territory would like to remind spectators that congregating at the team huddles is not permitted during the breaks. Again, down towards Darren Abbott, the high up and under. And the mark taken, can you believe it? Pack form, the Tigers' defence flew. And the mark taken here by Billy Rolfe. Well, you talk about ideal starts. This is exactly what Southern Districts want. A mark directly in front, 30 metres from goal. Stops and props, jogs in, kicks on goal. He's very happy. He's done exactly what his coach would have wanted him to do. Well done, Billy Rolfe. He handles up to the run of five. 10 seconds. Bangs long and bangs truly. The arms outstretched. He looks for the edge. Okay, Mike's live. Yes. Welcome back to Marara Oval. Hope that you're enjoying our broadcast here this afternoon. Natasha Medbury, Aaron Motlop and Dominic McCormack with you. The round 12 clash, the last match before the Christmas New Year break between the Nycliffe Tigers who sit on top of the ladder, I think in equal spot with the Eagles. And they're playing against Southern Districts who've been a little bit hot and cold this season. And this match is probably no exception. They beat the mighty Nycliffe Tigers the last time they played them at Nycliffe Oval. It was meant to be a celebration for the Tigers when the lights came on. They ended up losing. Well, they're making up for it today. They lead 11-10-76 to Southern Districts 4-6-30. A 46-point ball game. It was five points at quarter time in favour of the Tigers. 41 points at half time in favour of the Tigers. And they've gone on with it by 46 points. Interestingly, Aaron, they uh, advanced their score by five points, which is exactly what they did in the first quarter. I hope for the sake of the Southern Districts Crocodiles and their supporters that they don't advance their score by 36 points in the last quarter. Yeah, you certainly wouldn't. That they wouldn't go down great with uh, not only the supporters of Southern Districts, but also the, the coach and the playing group as well that That's are out it. there. And, you know, at the moment, they're, they're undermanned with a, with a couple of injuries on the bench. So, you know, for them, they just want to try and go out there and, and really try and win the quarter. I think that, that would be Matty Canard's message is to go out there and just try and nullify Michael's scoring ability, but also try and get some scoreboard pressure going and, and just try and win the quarter. I think that would be a nice way, I think, for them. To, there's not much to, to gain out of this game, but if they can... Yeah, try and win this last quarter going into the Christmas break. You know, they'll, they'll make sure they feel a lot better about themselves going into the, the second half of the season. And all important heading to that Christmas break, you yep. don't want to have your head down. Yeah. You, you want to at least win yep. this last quarter. Yep, take something positive out of it. Tash Medbury to get us underway in this last quarter. In the middle, Bowen is against Robinson. Now Robinson nice and high, but... Oh, and easily the tap down to Islet gets it onto a teammate, clears the centre square. On the bounce is Michael Bowden, just falls as he took the footy, but manages to get it to Cetus. Cetus kicks it forward, and underneath it is Cameron Islet, takes an uncontested mark on the chest, kicks it out wide, finds his teammate in Butcher, Danny Butcher again on his own. So just need to man up here, District's under enormous pressure. Here's McAdam, McAdam can't get it away. Look at the pressure applied by the Nightclub forwards. And here, Liam Holt-Fitz has a bounce as they're trying to tackle him. 
And the umpire did call him, even though he broke the tackle. That's the rule, so the free kick goes to Dean Staunton and, and the defensive 50. Oh, well done to the umpire. He's right onto it. The kick comes out now, and districts take that at right half back. Little chip. It was Kyle. It was up towards Bosley. Off hands. Went to Jorgensen. Confronted by Staunton. Jorgensen lays the tackle. Staunton up and about. Ball comes out. It was flicked away there by Ben Armat. No one can take clean possession as yet. Still out there on the outer wing in front of the scoreboard. Spillage comes now. The ball kicked by the Tigers. A high up and under. And that'll be out of bounds on the full. Cetus to take the free kick back there. Looking for options. In board is Zach Smith, and he goes exactly there. He can run on if he wishes to. He is called on to now by his teammates. He kicks long down the line. Bosley is the target. Made good position, and then the ball thumped away beautifully from Jaden Kicker. Did really well to make the contest and gained a boundary throw in for his teammates. I really need to put the arms out for that one and not wait for the footy. Just allow to kick it to get in there. The boundary throw in. Owen wins. Front position there. Islet goes without it. Quick kick by Robinson for districts forward. Gains a bit of meterage there. Bailey, Jordan Bailey goes without it. Tries to hand pass to an opponent. Dean Staunton, it's tried hard all game for the Southern Districts Crocs. Comes out to Kyle, Luke Kyle. Kicks it into the 50 and it's going to go over the boundary line. So probably about 25 metres around from the Southern Districts goal, but in the right area that Southern Districts need it to hopefully try and snag another goal back. Boundary throw in. We weren't really ready there. No one got a hand to it. Comes to the back. Cameron Island can't clear and he's been caught holding the footy. Couldn't get any boot to the footy there. So good call by the umpire and the free kick is going to Dean Staunton, who I thought had a pretty consistent game for Southern District. Yeah, I reckon he's probably been the, obviously been the, the captain of the team, but also uh, between him and Cedars, they've, they've just flown the flag for, for Southern Districts tonight. And, you know, I think it'd be a great uh, bit of feather in his cap if he can kick this goal and, and really cap off a, a really strong performance tonight. He kicks it from 45. Slight angle. Looks good off the boot. Has he snuck it in? He has. So good captain's goal for Dean Staunton. Hopefully he can lift the Crocodiles to win this last quarter. Who knows what could happen? So Nycliffe still leading 11, 10, 76, Southern Districts 5, 6, 36. With three minutes gone in the last quarter. Yeah, just showing as well, like it's Staunton and Cetus as well, you know, in the first couple of minutes of this quarter, have already got their hands on the footy and are really just trying to get their, their team more involved and, you know, certainly trying their hardest to improve that scoreboard. The umpire has the ball in hand back in the middle of the ground. Players just taking their time a little bit here. Gee, I've been impressed with Jackson Bowen. What a performance he's put up in the yeah. ruck. Yeah. Going up against Gallo and Robertson for the Crocodiles. On this occasion, he goes up against Robertson. He gets his hands to the footy. Philo comes through and soccers it away. Ball goes to Moniz Wakefield. Kicks long up inside 50. Bounces over the head of Kyle Emery. Charlie McAdam on the attack. So too, Drogamulla. The Crocodiles converge. Three onto one and then out of bounds on the full is the kick there. That was a bit sloppy by Zach Smith. Perhaps harsh to say, came off the side of the boot, Aaron, and then out of bounds on the full. You're 35 metres from goal. What a spot to give the free yeah, kick away. Yeah. A metre, probably a half a metre away from the boundary line as well. Which, I know. Uh, yeah, a bit of a... You sort of fumble it over the, yeah, the boundary line, I think. <laughs> Ryan Moo now with the free kick. Kicks up towards Cameron Islet. Just held good body positioning against Michael Bowden. Liam Holt fits there. But Michael Bowden did beautifully, grabbing hold of the footy, handballing off to a teammate. Kicks up... Yeah, he couldn't get out of the way, Stewie. <laughs> Even the crowd were calling for that free kick then. Oh. The Tigers to take the footy. That's gold. He yeah. looked at it, he could see it coming, but there was nowhere to, nowhere to yeah. go. <laughs> and Gallo, it is. in fact, Robertson it is, the big man, gallops along. The long left foot kick, he up towards Bosley, off hands to McClendon, tried to handball over the top, looking for a teammate in Kyle. But it was cut off there by Boyd for the Tigers, and it'll be a boundary throw in. Half forward here for Southern Districts. Left half forward, Morris Rioli, grandstand side of the ground. Boundary throw in's a good one. It's always gone off to that side. The Ruckman still aren't awake to it really yet. Picked up there by Jordan Bailey. Gets it away to Lake. First kick he's had, I reckon, for the afternoon. And a player tossed to the ground. So a free kick will be taken here by Bosley. I think, it, in fact, it's Ross for Southern Districts. He's been a good player, Ross. Dylan Barry cruising by, looking for a handball there. Still there, still waiting. 
And Ross has now found a player in the clear. Well done. Did that really nicely. Everybody was looking at Dylan Barry, but cruising off to the side, is it Rolf here who's picked it up? It is indeed Billy Rolf. He kicked the first goal of the third quarter and now has an opportunity to kick District's second goal for this last quarter. 40 points is the ball game. We've gone just over five minutes in this last quarter and Billy Rolf, man on the mark, about 40 from goal. He's 20 metres in from the boundary. The left of centre, could he kick their second? Kick on the way, he's placed it nicely. Oh, he's placed it beautifully. That's a great kick from Billy Rolf. Splits the middle. They have their second for the last quarter. And Southern Districts, they move on to 6-6-42, trailing the Tigers 11-10, 76. But Aaron Modlop, some really positive play. Yeah, it has been. You know, six minutes into the quarter and, you know, their second goal uh, in as many minutes as well from you know, Staunton first up and then for Rolf there to really kick truly there and a really tough angle as well. And, and for him to be able to place that perfectly uh, was, you know, a, a great kick for them. And, you know, two goals in a row gives them a little bit of hope. You know, we're not sure what's going to, how this quarter will play out, but they're certainly giving themselves an opportunity is still hanging this game. So back in the middle. Yellow's chopped out there and so is Drogamola. So Drogamola does well to beat the big man. Well done by Brody Follows. <laughs> Dominic, good pick up, full pace. Good work by McAdam. Hand passes to Ogden. Running past Ogden needs to get it back. The big Ruckman Gallo gives it back to him. Ogden was going too fast for himself. Couldn't handle it. Then it lands in Philo's lap, kicks it into the 50. The big Ruckman in Bowen is down there having a rest in the forward 50, picked up by Jorgensen. It's a good looking kick in these conditions and it hits the post. Oh, he was in a difficult position, but he weighed it up well and unfortunately it hits the post and a quick kick out of defence here for Southern Districts. Oh, great play that was by the Tigers. Districts now on the move out of defence. Jesse Clark looks like he might get it back again. He does. He keeps running, kicks inboard, goes to Kyle, kept his eye on the footy, four grabs at it, took the mark, plays on immediately. Handball over the top to Ross. He's on his bike, kicks long, target down there, Bosley. He's got the arms extended, doesn't take the mark, back on the footy, snaps on goal and kicks the goal. Southern Districts, what could be happening here? Three goals in a row. This is exactly what they did to start the first quarter, Aaron. And let's leave it at that. Yeah. Because, <laughs> well, for, for them as well, just their transfer to play from the kick out, you know, they, they really look to try and take the game on as well, which is a, you know, something that they haven't been able to do for, for the majority of this game. And even just get that goal there to Bosley, he's second for the match. And the crowd involvement as well, they understand that's the it, importance it. of it. You know, that's the third goal for the quarter. And all it does is give them a bit of a, bit of a sniff. You know, at the moment, they're... Uh, 29 uh, points down. Anything could happen, but all they've got done is given themselves an opportunity to get closer in this game while the, it's still early on in the last quarter. They're back in the middle. Yellow and Drogamola. Again, Yellow just goes a little bit too early there for the districts. Good work by Brood. Drogamala gets it out to Phil Will. Center wing here. It's a kick away. It's going to land at the top of the 50. Cameron Islet's underneath it. Nearly takes Ooh. the mark. Well done to Michael Bowden to not let him take that mark. He drags it in. He needs to get rid of it. What's the umpire going to call? Then they trap it into him. Well done. Southern Districts there. Cameron Islet tried to disguise that, but he dragged it in. And he was caught holding the ball. So... McAdam, who I thought a pretty handy game as well in defensive 50. That was a pullback. That should be Drogamola's free kick, and it is against Patrick Gallo, the big ruckman for Southern Districts. So Drogamola has chopped out really well in the ruck today when Bow Bowen, ha Bowen has had a rest. Looking for that man now. Bowen comes down to Brew. Brew with quick hands tries to get it to Islet, but Cetus intercepts. Coming across the pack is Barry. Oh. Barry has an old style coat hanger. They have a bit of a laugh. I think they're Thunder teammates, I believe, but it was an old style <laughs> coat hanger there, and Barry has the free kick on centre wing. Centre wing indeed, Morris Frioli, grandstand side. What can districts do here? Barry up towards Lake, dropped the mark, went back in and got it, handballed off to the advantage there of Bailey. Now a kick comes from Abbott. Abbott goes to Ogden, takes the mark, 30 from goal, plays on, kicks the goal. Four goals straight for Southern Districts.
And the, the momentum continues to uh, follow Southern Districts at the moment. And all they've done is just been a bit more attacking. They've, they're not so much, I think, concerned about the scoreboard anymore in terms of Nycliffe getting on top and, and kicking goals. They're actually trying to be a bit more attacking themselves, which is great to see. And you know, a bit of, bit of feeling back into the game now with a couple of t uh, high tackles and, and Districts really getting up and about at the moment. So it's uh, exciting to see. And the crowd obviously getting a bit more involved as, as Nycliffe edged a little bit. Closer on the scoreboard. And perhaps a little bit of cleaner footy too, Aaron. They've, they've done a, some better things with the footy. Yeah, they, they've gone away from trying to overuse the ball as well. They just mm. try to kick it long to their forwards, which is what I think what we've been asking for most of the game. And they've finally started to do it, and it's working out uh, pretty well for them. Around, uh, the umpire throws it up in the middle. Joggermuller puts the tackle on. Drop footy. The umpire says play on. Robertson tries to get it out for district. Wills is taken in a pretty high tackle, but the umpire let it go. It's still in the middle of the square. Well done taken by Abbott. Abbott with a quick kick out. Finds Bowden. Bowden just manages to get his foot to the footy. Philo picks it up first. Heard the call from behind, but couldn't hit his target and drug a mull up. Picked up by Mont's Wakefield. He goes without it, but was held oh. off the footy. Probably a bit of a harsh call there, but Mont's Wakefield has the footy here for Nightcliff. Delivers it Inside the 50, Ogden at the back cleans up. He's stripped of the footy by Le Holt Fitz. Player all by himself and Jorgensen couldn't find him. Trent Melville goes without it, but a handball over the top to Cole Emery in the goal square all by himself, and it's through for a goal. So Cole Emery has his fourth goal of the game, and in the end was too easy. He was in the goal square all by himself for an easy hand pass. And the Nightclip Tigers, 12-11-83, still leading the district's 8-6-54. Just an opportunistic one there. I think a district, I'm not sure which player it was. Unfortunately, the, the handball backwards just uh, he fumbled at the crucial time and it whole fits ever the uh, opportunistic uh, football player, if I've ever seen one, just uh, swooped on it there and, and really set up uh, Emery there for a, a, a lollipop, I guess, as you will, just a, by himself, uncontested. He, he could have just really picked it up and had a cup of tea and kicked that one. Good play by the Tigers, just relieving the pressure a little bit. It was four goals in a row to districts there. Tigers finally on the board in this last quarter. The ruck contest. Call it a draw. Socket through the middle by Jordan Bailey. Crashing through Monty's Wakefield. Did well. Got the ball to Philip Wills in the middle of the ground. His long kick now looking for Melville. Got one hand to it. Bounced off the back there of Innes. Handball over the top now goes to Ogden. Ogden looking for the Ruckman. I don't know whether that's a good move in the wet or at all, in fact. Robertson, he did okay. Went back to Innes. He's now tackle ball held to him. Robertson comes in to lend a bit of support, but there'll be a ball up 10 metres in from was, the boundary. How good was Emery in, in that, that defensive that Yeah, attacking just play in there. that sort of play there. Just never gave up on it as well. When just putting the pressure, pressure, pressure. Pressure on it. Some tired bodies as well there with the Ruckman and the centre half back. I think just not communicating is better. So Bowen hits it. Tries to, and that's a out of bounds on the full. So close to the boundary line there. Probably could have fallen over and just taken it over. But unfortunately for Southern Districts, went out of bounds on the full. So the free kick is going here to Mott, Daniel Mott. Right in front of our commentary box on the grandstand side. Asked to play on. Just kicks it to the into the 50. Nearly a mark to Trent Mel Melville. Up and under kick camp underneath it is Cameron Islet. He can't mark it. In there's Brew. Jeez, I like the way Brew plays. Sitting still in the forward 50 here for the Tigers. Brew's back in there again. Trent Melville's over it. Shovels it out to Moo. Moo, quick hand pass to Mott. Mott to Islet. Islet with a quick kick. But underneath it is the district's player in Jesse Clark. And looking to clear it out wide with, to the runner in Lionel Ogden that's going to have a bounce out of the defensive 50. He does indeed. Now he spots up a teammate further forward. And Kyle has had a good game. Kyle on the burst now to Abbott. Abbott spearing one in towards Bosley. A little bit too high for him. He got hands to it. He goes back onto it. Has a crack at the goal. That's a goal. From the right forward pocket on the left boot. He skidded it through on the ground. That was a terrific kick from Bosley. And all of a sudden, Andrew Bosley's kicked three goals for the game. Two of them coming in this last quarter. It's five goals to one in this last quarter. Importantly, we've gone 15 minutes. The score is 12-11-83.
Nightcliff Tigers to Southern Districts 9 6 60. A 23 point ball game, only four goals. Aaron. Yeah, almost a missed opportunity as well. I think Abbott had a, a pretty uncontested kick as well. We could have really laced up and taken his time over him. Yep. Just really missed Bosey, but fortunately for him, he was able to regain himself and, and really kick a, <laughs> an opportunistic goal to bring his team a bit closer. So in the middle, the Ruckman. Gallows there, gets a handball out. Districts go forward again, kicks it into the 50. Just lands in front of the teammates there. Looking for it is Luke Cole. Luke Cole gathers, looks in board, and it's chopped off by Cameron Islet. DZ read that really well. So Nightcliff have put their main man at Cameron Islet into the defensive 50. They're just holding up play, looking for something out wide. Centre wing goes over the top of Cole Emery. He drags his opponent to ground there. No free kick is Jesse Clark, and it's over for a boundary throw and in between the interchange of the team. Grandstand side here. Crowd certainly agreed with you, Natasha. Yeah, he, uh, he, managed <laughs> to hide that. Crowd. he managed to hide that pretty well, but he just blindsided the umpire and had his hand on the jumper and pulled his, his opponent down. Centre wing here, 16 minutes gone, an important boundary throw in. Ball tossed up high, Gallo up against Bowen. Gallo had it momentarily. The ball pushed forward for Southern Districts. On the pursuit here, Dylan Barry picks it up well. Toast toe pokes it forward. Kyle gets it. He's met in a heavy tackle. It was a high tackle, free kick paid. Staunton takes it, kicks inside 50. Socket away by Bosley. Now the Tigers are away. Off the boot of Bowles. The high flyer was Jorgensen onto the back of Lionel Ogden. Ogden wins the footy, gets a handball out in favour of Bowden for a moment. Emery back onto it. He gathers, kicks long, down towards the goal square. Wrestle between Melville and Innes down there. Melville gathers, snaps back on goal and snaps brilliantly, does Trent Melville. What a goal for the Tigers. And at the 17 minute mark, that could be the goal that ends this game. Well done by the Nightcliff Tigers. Yeah, still, you think there's still a little bit of time to play out in this, but that was a, an amazing goal there from, uh, from Melville. A bit of class to, to, to end. A great passage of play for them as well, just to be able to withstand the pressure from districts and be able to move the ball forward. And, and you know, a couple of lucky bounces or whatnot, or, or say what you will, but their ability just to stay over the footy and, and win the contested ball and, and really make the most of their opportunities going for, forward, which at the end of the day is going to you know, give them the four points, you would think, um, tonight, just their ability to be able to capitalise on the scoreboard. So, back in the middle. Neither advantage of the Ruckman, but Gallo gets in there for a second crack, tries to tap it out to a teammate. Taken off the ball there was Zach Smith. Got his kick away for Districts. Moves it forward. A number of players here. Nightcliff with control of the footy through Bowles. Bowles with a lovely looking kick, but nearly chopped off there by Lionel Ogden. Read that well. Drogo, Hugo Drogamola goes without it. Under pressure here is Smith. Smith manages just to get the hand pass away. Liam Holt Fitz didn't hit his target, but he goes in for a second crack. Well done to Michael Bowden. Intercepted so Sean Wilson couldn't get it. Goes back to his teammate in sure Jesse Clark, sorry. Then Lionel Ogden through the centre square just to chip kick. Finds his uh, teammate in Luke Kyle. Kyle with the running Dean Staunton got on the right side of his opponent. Didn't need to hand pass. Nearly buggered it up. Picked it up again and then picks it and finds his teammate. Geez, he butted up well, didn't he? Lionel Ogden, I thought he'd stuff that up, but Darren Abbott has taken the mark in front of Nathan Brown. Nathan Brown's not happy. He's pointing to a few of his teammates in the midfield there that didn't help him uh, try and stop that one. Yeah, he probably feels like his midfield isn't working hard enough uh, at this late stage in the game, especially with districts pressing. As... Abbott, and he shanked the kick, and it's gone through four behind. So Nightcliff 89, District 61, 19 and a half minutes gone last quarter. Tigers just steadying here. Bowles runs his full measure, kicks long to the outer wing. Cameron Islet out there, controlling the footy, evading a tackle. Didn't take the mark, but was always in control. Now kicks long. Looking for the target there of Drogamulla. Had the one hand extended, couldn't get hold of it. Now Jorgensen in front of Ogden. Played that beautifully. Got a handball off to Ryan Moo. Paddled the ball in front of himself and was then taken high by McAdam. Called to play on. He got the handball away to Philo. Philo evades a tackler. Runs through the corridor. Has a crack at the goals. And just misses to the right-hand side. A minor score. 
one point onto the scoreboard for the Nycliffe Tigers. They move to 13 12 90. Southern Districts 9 7 61. 20 minutes gone in this last quarter. Smith with the kick out duties. This goes long looking for Robinson. It's against Bowen and it's going to go out of bounds. 55 around from the uh, Nycliffe Tigers goal. So just the contest over there, Cameron Island against a young Ben Armat. Oh, I've managed all the all the jewels yeah, that he's two. had with his father and <laughs> now right. his, his sons out there <laughs> manning up on him. Just uh, amazing. So boundary throwing, Bowen too easily just gets the ball down looking for Wills, but intercepted there by Cetus. Had a great game for Southern Districts. Abbott tries to pick it up. He goes without it. Bowden's in there again. Shoveling it forward. Barry doesn't get a good connection. Good work here by Tigers. Going back to kick it. Kick it just evades one, then kicks it forward. Looking for Bowen. Doesn't get it, but Bowden goes back in as well. Moves there just to tap back. Liam Holt fits. Dangerous at ground level. Picks it up. Doesn't fumble. Then looks for Cole Emery. He can't mark it. Shawnee Wilson has it. Gives it back to Ryan Moon. Under enormous pressure as he kicks it. Looking for Cameron Islet. Pushed in the back. The umpire says play on. Districts just looking to kick away, clear some space, and there's that young fella on debut, Ben Armat for Districts. Ben Armat takes his kick after taking a nice little mark, just popped that up for Ogden. Then it was two under one in favour of the Tigers, and the Tigers will win out here. Handball comes out to Bowles. He just lace out onto the chest of Cameron Islet, takes a mark in the left forward pocket. Looks for a moment as though he's just going to go back casually with those eyes darting, always looking to see where he can pass it off to. The man on the mark, about 20 metres in from the boundary, left forward pocket, 40 metres away from goal. Left of centre, Cameron Island kicking to the airport end here, looking for the 14th goal of the night for the Tigers. And for himself, he's looking for his second. He kicked one in the second quarter. Can he kick one in the last? Kick on its way. Looks pretty good off the boot. He stuck it to the near side and it stayed exactly there. Another minor score added to the scoreboard. So 91 plays 61. It's an even five goal game here in favour of the Tigers at the 22 minute mark. Smith with the kick out just goes long up the guts of the ground. And they come back here for district. Does it pay off? Good pick up by Barry. Barry, little, a foot kick. Boyd couldn't control it for the Tigers, but gets it back, Boyd. Brown against John Ross. John Ross just tries to tackle him, and Abbott needs to get rid of the footy. The umpire says he managed to handball that away. I'm not quite sure how, but back to Brown for Nycliffe. Picks it forward. Philo with a one-handed mark in these conditions. Calling for it as Wills, but he ignores that. Ryan Moon nearly takes a great mark in between two district players, but butters up at ground level. Goes in for a second crack. Hand passes off to Brew. Brew kicks it into the 50. Bowles is down there as well. He wants another goal. He's going to have to chase his opponent back down the ground now because districts have cleared it. But Boyd intercepts there at centre half back for the Tigers and goes out wide to Mont Wakefield. Mont Wakefield takes the mark at left half back for the Tigers, steps around his opponent a little bit too easily, goes on a run, kicks long into attacking 50. A wrestle happens and Kyle Emery just too good. The use of the body was absolutely fantastic. Takes the mark on his chest against Zach Smith. And Zach Smith just had one of those nights. He's up against a really good player in Kyle Emery. Emery now to go back and have a crack at his fifth goal, which in these conditions would be a very, very good return indeed. He would kick from left of centre, about 45 metres from goal. No real angle to speak of. Just steadying himself here. Let's see if he can kick the 14th goal for the night. They've had 26 cracks at it. They've kicked 13-13, the Tigers. Southern Districts 9-7. Emery jogs across the paint of 50. Kick on its way. Didn't really like it as soon as it left the boot. It's gone through for yet another minor score. 13, 14, 92 plays 9, 7, 61. Ticking away to 24 minutes gone in this last quarter. He just plays on, gets around one, dances and tries to dance around the second. He's put his teammate under enormous pressure, so it's a hurried kick out of defence for Southern Districts and a good mark taken by the big man Dean Robinson in the centre square. Plays on quickly, arcs around, puts it to the top of the 50, looking for Brody Lake. Brody Lake being very quiet in this game, can't 
take the mark under pressure, but well done to Jonathan Paris as the siren sounds to end the game. So Nightcliff clear winners here, 13, 14, 92. Um, Southern Districts, 9, 7, 61. So a good 31 point win here to the Nightcliff Tigers.